What? What do we got? We're professional now. Are you ready to do this? I am so ready to do this. Hey, it is, what the hell is today? Today is Wednesday. It's Collider Live. This is the third show in the week. And what a crew we have today. This is a big show. A very big show today. And on the desk, back from his tour around the world, Mark Ellis is here. Hello, Mark. Happy hump day, Christian. You too. Is that what it is? It's hump day, yeah. My uh, my mom told us when we were in like, I don't know, I was in like eighth grade or something. We were going yeah. to school and it was Wednesday. And my mom's like, well, kids, it's hump day, so have a good hump what day. What is hump day? We it's started high school. dying because we did right. mom just say hump? Yeah, what does it mean? It means it's right. the hump, like you're getting over the oh, hump I of see. the week. So like, oh, if the week is a Wednesday. camel, yeah, pay attention to that then Monday and Tuesday are kind of like the bat. And then you get over that, that hump. Right. And now it's, oh, hey, we can drink tonight. We only got Thursday and Friday well, to worry about. Speaking of humps, welcome back, Brett Sheridan. Hey. Nice to have you back. Brett Segway. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I thought he was going to do me? that. I thought he was going to do that to you, but he went <laughs> right to me. You're a hump. I am, I am a hump. I am a hump. I'm here. I made it. We have a story about you, Mama Mia. Oh, we got some good ones, folks. Coming in live. Coming in live, coming in hot. And we're all live. She is straight off her buffet of people. Um, Roxy Stryer is here. Hello. You always say I don't save it for the show, and I save this for the show. What would you save? I uh, went to visit my grandparents yesterday. And they listened to the show. And my Grammy, she was like, I was on Instagram, and a little circle popped up, and it had your face. So I clicked on it, and uh, you were talking about eating people. <laughs> How'd that go? I was like, uh, yeah, of all the shows in the years the that one. I've done, that's the one you clicked on. She was like, um, uh, mm, uh, um, not for me. <laughs> Uh, not for me. <laughs> uh, not for Grammy. Not for me. The show wasn't for her. I was like, okay, well, next time you see my little circle yeah. face, don't click on it. Did you tell her again. hashtag that's the show? Hashtag so brave. So brave. She yeah. get it, though. She was brave for, yeah. for bringing that she up. She was so. very brave. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's nice to have you here again. Mm, here. It's always nice to be here. It's always good not to have you. Not for me. Why do you think uh, you did it again, though, this morning? You, you said, you, you going into the theme, Roxy thinks she's very annoying as a person. Oh, my God. And mm -hmm. today she said... Um, a lot of self-doubt. A lot. Oh, and she yeah. said, she all of the self-doubt. Yeah, she walked in today and she said, like, why do I always have to be involved in a conversation? It's so annoying. It's so... Okay, I grew up with my two siblings who were just like, shut up! Anytime they would be talking about something, I'd walk in the room and say, what, 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 until yeah. they answer what they're talking about. And they're like, you, it doesn't have anything to do with you. You're not in the conversation. And so today I walked in and you guys were talking about something, nothing to do with me. I have no idea what it's about. And I said, who, who? Who? Right, Roxy's inner voice is actually here right now. But you We're, don't think that like your natural, uh, fun, energetic right. personality, charisma <laughs> compensates? Right. Because there are people who come into conversations you're like, oh, this drip. But yeah. then there's other people that come in and it's like, oh, I'm happy to have this person. I like when she gets join involved, our little but conversation. She has an inner voice. And oh, it's so annoying. I can <laughs> hear it. I'm trying, Beardo. They're not. They're not even giving it to you. No, they're no, you no, you and Ellis didn't give it to me. Beardo's getting ready for the show. Oh. <laughs> Roxy, this is your inner voice. Um, when you think about saying something stupid, say it. It makes you who you are. And Br Br Brett said that this is a uh, Brett. What, who am I actually? What do I sound like? <laughs> He's one of her turds. Can't get out. Push it out. You can do it. Use your imagination. I love that voice so much. Well, I think I'll go back to the Middle East. <laughs> How are you doing I think that? I'm good. It's good. It's an impression that I've been working on. How can I do it? Try it. Um, okay, so oh, I, I was pushing out the turn and <laughs> it got caught in the wind. You, why do you sound sad? You sound like she's gonna, uh, yeah, that voice sounds good. Ooh, That's some more Buffalo Bill kind of. So Yours is like Optimus Prime. Hers is like Buffalo Bill. Hers sounds like like when you're calling a hotline or something. My, for me, I I no, sound I sound terrible. I lost well, it's it. funny because you were. Tr I think you were trying to adjust your voice like. It's doing it's doing the adjustment, but you're like, I need to get <laughs> no, down I mean, low it's like this. Yeah, it's like when, when so. kids suck on a hot air balloon and yeah. they think that their voice is yeah. is so, so they're they're trying to play up the helium yeah. angle of it. Yeah. No, that 
that's just what my voice. I mean, I already have like a low, gravelly right. voice. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. That's not me no, putting on a voice. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's oh, well, well, and this, this isn't, isn't me putting on a voice either. either. It's so weird. Yeah, that sounds like a little weird kid. Whoa. I'm glad you guys are having fun. Yeah, that's you know? what we do. It's We're a, really helping welcome people. Back. This is a smile on Christian's face. I like it. It's like he's you got yeah. a new toy for Christmas. And I don't want to do show bits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do bits. <laughs> no, I'll be on the show, but I'm not going to do bits. Who's sorry. that? Who's yeah. that? You. That's not me at all. Why did you say that? Sounds just like you. Hates nonsense. Hates bits. You don't like nonsense? I like nonsense and bits when they're funny. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that bit wasn't yeah. funny. I'm just saying. Well, I almost, after the right. second time you tried it, I was like, e- you're under tension. I was, it's well, not no, going to go. I was trying. <laughs> the setup was good the first time. No, the, the Ellis real, didn't pick up on it. And then she went over. How did he step on you, though? Because what I was about to say. I was that's, about to what say bo- that's what bothers me about it right there. Yeah. That's what bothers me about, about bits and nonsense <laughs> is when we're having an actual conversation. And then here comes Johnny Sketch with like, oh, oh, I got a bit. And then I didn't set him up for it because I had no idea that a bit was happening. Uh, malarkey. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan yeah. of malarkey. Yeah, I gotta be honest. What's that say right there? Just that's, checking. That says hashtag. That's that. That's T show. Close. You, missed, you missed an H in there, Dad. There's, there's an H in there. It just it looks like an L because I have, I have horrendous handwriting. You know that. That's T show. I think yeah. uh, the culture in general has horrendous handwriting because we all type, type shit no. on our phones. Mine was bad before that. Ever the happened. culture. Just yeah. all all Everybody. the people. Have you culture. seen anybody's handwriting? Who's it's, got good penmanship? Anybody have good penmanship Grammy. anymore? Well, yeah, right. <laughs> Cody's got great Grammy's handwriting. Got Does dope. she? Oh, she. He, it's a, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> that is a man. He is uh, a man. Cody, is that? Yeah, I guess Cody can it transfer over to a woman's name also. No, right? No, uh, he, he did an I. Cody maybe. works. Cody does. Yeah. Cody's right. a sexy girl name. There's got to be. I think it's there's also a, a sexy name for Cody. Female Cody. 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 Yeah. There's right. there's Cody Banks, which is obviously right. Frankie Muniz. Porn star. Um, what doesn't po- work over on this? A Mark is oh, Marky. Right. Yeah, Mark's pretty. Tough. I would bang yeah. Josh. Cody. Josh doesn't work. Josh, yeah. yeah. Christy. Jordan. Christ, Christian, I know, Jordan's I know, a great one. Jordan's I know a girl named Christian. Brittany. Christian oh, you're actually <laughs> oh, doing yeah. all of our names. Yeah. I thought wow, you yeah. would be Ross. I could go both ways. Yeah, you'd so just great. be Rock. You can't. I was supposed to be my name if I was a guy, and I was supposed to be Xanadu as a girl. It was going to be Xanadu. Rock? I was going to be Rock or Xanadu. Right. So if you and were a girl, girl, you were going to be Xanadu? Yeah. Okay, okay, but you ended up being a girl. <laughs> I uh, know. So what the hell are you? Uh-huh. An alien? Mm-hmm. Well, if you were yeah. a girl, Roxy, we were going to name you Xanadu. Now you're trying right. to change your voice, Brett. Yeah. No, and, I am, because I can do my own voice. as I I can do my own voice, too, Brett. No. Quick question. Yes, sir. Where? What are we at? Week four? Now, week four. What do, how much does one of these set you back? <laughs> Extra one of these, maybe. Right. To kind of articulate. How many times did you this. show up last week? Um, the last once. few times. Well, I got to work so I can pay for one of these <laughs> to bring in for my own microphone. When you start showing up more regularly, you get one it's, of these. I, I think there should be a challenge laid to Brett. What's that? And I think that you should see how many posters does Brett have to hang up before he gets his own microphone on? That's on the boys. I mean, how many more do we have back there, guys? Posters? No, I posters. <laughs> arms. Oh, arms? Yeah. Well, I mean, how many people are in this room? We got Riley, Alex. Oh, you meant the the mic arms. Oh, oh. oh him, come on, give him the thing, Beardo. No, no, but no, no. Sh- See, that's the nonsense I like. That yeah. doesn't yeah. deserve it. Yeah. When anybody yeah. else except me does it. But yeah, we probably got a couple arms back there. I'm sure. That's cool. Yeah. I, I appreciate you. you're here. This is not a two way street by Which any one? stretch of the imagination. There's one person in oh. our relationship that has been accused of never supporting the other person's jokes, and that person is you. You you, you listen don't support his jokes. Well, that's not true. I have not listened to Afterthoughts in a month. I love Ryan and Jay. I can't listen to the show on a regular basis they for personal me. reasons, yeah. but it's because uh, you have been accused in the past, which okay. I haven't even noticed. From who? From them. Oh, from them. Yeah, right. Of not appreciating his jokes. Um, that's the accusation. That's yeah. the allegation. No, but they don't. But to be fair to them, what they what they have said was that because we've been working together so long that it's, I just I just know you when it's coming. Yeah, uh, it's more like you tune me out. It's more like <laughs> it's more like we're an old couple and we're sitting right. by the, like like the TV's on. We're reading the newspaper and I'm reading right. the sports section. You're reading lifestyle. Here comes Jim. Tell another one of his funnies. <laughs> yeah, and it's like yeah. if I'm if you're the husband in the relationship right. and you just Rock a fart. I don't even acknowledge <laughs> right. it. Just like, oh, it's just fucking Christian. Yeah. Right. Do yeah. You, you feel that way about him? No. I think he's fine. So squashed. It never was. There's never a thing. I, but he, he tried well, to make it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it in the ring at the end of the month here, though, too. If you saw in the beginning of the, the promo we got, if you yeah, want to see Mark and I go head to head in a schmodown, never happened before, but it will be going down at the end of the month. It's exclusive for Patreon, so make sure you check How that out. How long is it exclusive for patrons? It's always. That's but, it. But, there's two, but there's, it starts at one tier, and then two weeks later, no matter what tier you're at, you can get it. 
Oh, what, so you got to be a patron. What tier does okay. it start at? It starts at ten, the ten dollar yeah. tier, and then when it's it just just from from what I know about the match right now, I know it's a five rounder, mm -hmm. so I know it's going to be worth the. Well, because uh, we always want, thought we were going to do a championship. Tier. We always thought we were going to do a championship match. We always, we always thought we'd see each other. Yeah, and so now we're just going to do it as if we're getting the DeLorean and we're going to play five rounds, and may the best man win. I, I don't think it's a DeLorean situation. No? I think you and I could throw our hat back in the ring. And be back and and beat a lot of people in this league. No, no, no. I'm talking about DeLorean in regards to because at the time I had the championship and I thought we were going to play. Oh, so right, right, right. We thought we'd be five rounds. Oh, so once again, I let you down. And no, I let my – I look, Sam Levine kicked the piss out of me. It was a bad game. Down. It was a bad game for both of you. Yeah. You guys were tired. The Blade Runner question yeah, was The terrible. final was like seven to six. It was like a rec league game. It was horrible. It was horrible. Those questions in the first round weren't great. <laughs> um, You're such a grouch. Yeah, I am. Uh, Do you schmo down, Roxy? She manages. Yeah. You manage? I do manage. Christian's tried to get me to play a many a time. Oh, yeah. he's tried to get you to. Yeah. You... All right. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> what I miss? Oh, no. no. He's been wanting to play. But he's you like, hold me down You want to play? Yeah, but you don't, you don't really want to play. I kind of do just to just No, he, he do does it. because no. at, when I was at the live event. Yeah. Brett was walking around, and he was he seemed very excited. And most people are excited at the live event backstage just to be on stage and be in front of the crowd. Brett has been in front of crowds. He had something else going on inside of him. <laughs> he he was, had a fire. He had a no, beast in his belly. Did, you didn't. And then you weren't. First of all, you weren't on the show when we were talking about this. Second of all, okay, that were, sounded like you're upset at me. <laughs> not at all. I, I just, have. A, no, I have no, things no. to do. No, I'm not. I and mean, you were also that night very busy. Um, What's going should, on with the two of you guys? Nothing. Today? We're having a conversation, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> should be commend your father and Mom I are and talking. Dad. Yes, yeah. Let's go eat somebody. Um, Fine. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I want to find we'll out why we'll get into that. But but, yeah. com but you should be commended in the fact that you flew back from Canada. Yeah. Just to get there and then flew right back. Flew like, right back. Insane. So your head was all over the place. What you didn't notice that night was him hiding in the corner, and I said like a wet rat trying to stay like. Uh, warm. He was. He didn't want to deal with anybody. He didn't want to be around. He didn't want to be around fans. He didn't want to be around competitors. He wanted out. He came up to me right after the match and was like, "Hey, I got some questions." He, he, like, like at one point in time, he said that he would have been beating either. It, it was it, the first match or the second match. He would have had the lead. Oh, I killed the Pixar round, round. I could have killed you? that one. Yeah. yeah. And I was down. I was in the green yet? room. Yeah. Uh, okay. I was in the green room. Up. Oh okay. God! Thank God. <sighs> yeah. Um, I was in the green room, like challenging. <laughs> Uh, Roca, and I had him one question. That'd be a mistake. First question I got, I got uh, right, and then he, but he, I don't think he was playing. Brett can beat Roca. The, I think Brett can get in Roca's head. Let me yes, tell you. Man! Why won't you let him? Why won't you let him play? No, because I, I let him. I said, here, here's what we'll do. We'll put you in one of these fan leagues first, <laughs> and then he he sat and he played with some fans, and they kicked the piss out of him. And I can't, but you put him in, you put him in the elite. It's going to be a waste of a match. Why would you want to play? What? <laughs> because I'm an attention whore. Oh. <laughs> right, Brett. Do you want to do you want to walk out with me when when we do the Patreon match? Yeah. It, it would be, I was gonna have Roxy's Grammy, but I don't think Grammy is really into yeah the schmoda. Not for want me. Grammy. It's not for me. Not, <laughs> yeah, but Brett. Brett, though, I do feel bad for because of we talked about it briefly on yesterday's show. This sucks. Um, so we had gotten an invite from Universal to go to Greece for Mamma Mia too. Right. So Jack had said to me, well, well, is there anybody we want to send? I go, we got to send Brett. If Brett can do it. I said, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. It's, it's short notice. It was supposed to be this past Monday. Short notice, but let me see. And Brett's like, well, I'm actually, I've got my passport coming to me quick. I can, I can, you know, I can hopefully get it, and then I can go. But You're I, a fan I'm of the Mamma Mia's? No, he's a fan of Greece. You've been to Greece? Uh, no, I have not been to Greece. But he wanted to go, so he was going to go. He's going to be either going to put him up, the whole thing, pay for the trip, pay for food. Yeah, they take care of you. Everything. So, yeah, thank you. So he's on his way. And we're like, he's on his way to get his, his passport. And then we find out they wanted a dot-com writer mm. at the very end of it. And it's like we put everything in there. So imagine Brett on the plane. Just turn the music up. Oh, this is and so good. Brett's on the plane. And he's looking up and he's smiling. And he can't wait. Brett, do you the dance that you would have been doing at the window? Right. So he's, he's looking. He's getting ready. It's nice and bright and sunny out there. And he's asking the most ridiculous questions you ever see. He's interviewing Lily James and what bits we have. And then crash. Yeah. So you got frosty. Right. No, you can't. Anyway. No, we couldn't send any dot com because they were all exhausted from TIFF. So the we biggest so we thing. Anyway. Now this is the thing. I I was. He's like, can you get this? Can you get this passport? I mean, and my passport was already being processed and expedited, right. but it wasn't expedited to come back to me. I had just gotten out. I was having a good week. I had two auditions that day. He calls me about going to Greece. Like I'm flying high, so I'm like, okay, I got to get this done. I call him up. I expedite the shipping back. Next day, I go down to the federal building, which is a great place, and it works. It's I, very. You're on a big adventure. Like, 
passport. I had yeah. mine expedited there too. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, of course, I miss another day of work for that. And to get my passport expedited, um, I do have children to feed, mind you. Uh, all for this trip to Greece, it's going to be great. And I get this expedited, and I get that thing delivered to me the next day by noon. And I send it over to Jack. I say, hey, man. What? Did it. Did we did it, huh? Yeah, little dots. Ah, oh, boy. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I, I think. Dots I don't think we're getting approved. And I mean, just the, uh, such a bump. And my rough. mom was here. You know what? And I had to I tell my mom yeah, that. Yeah. I don't think that they got. The thing is, like, I. Um, the show now it's been doing really well. The the views have been mm-hmm. great. The downloads Which have been show? awesome. This show. Oh, the views have been great. Good downloads, for us. but I don't. Uh, <laughs> Good. Um, what are you guys talking what, about? Who? <laughs> what who? show? What show? Why? How? Why? Why? What? Where? Who's greasy? So and fucking I don't annoying. Think, and, and I don't pale. think though that Universal has caught on yet. And I think Universal wanted to. I don't know what they. I mean, you would have probably gotten a lot more coverage on that. I think they here. will, and I think that you and I know some people we're talking about here with studios that we yeah. do have great relationships with, and great. Universal may be one of I those. I got a great relationship with Universal, but yeah. there's other studios too that, that send us on a lot of fun stuff, and maybe Brett's in line for one of those. This is interesting though because Monday, like I Monday, was flying Monday, back, Monday. I could have. I mean, I, I could have tried to work Greece into the trip, mm. but. Yeah. Uh, God, that would have been. I think it would have been too much fun. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because the other thing. So Steve Byrne, very funny comedian, mm-hmm. guy that you went on this tour with. Yeah. Right? So and Steve, I've known for a long time at the at the comedy store. He's in. He's going to be in here a little longer, about 15 minutes to. Yeah. Talk. He's, he's coming in here today. He's a bunch of comedy specials. Yeah. He was on the TBS. He created Sullivan and yep. Son. He's got a documentary that he's got coming out that he directed, and then he also just uh, completed principal photography on his uh, first feature film called Opening Act. Wow. That's awesome. And we'll yeah. talk to him about that. But we're also going to talk to him about um, movie news in general. He's a big movie fan. Like every huge time movie fan. We're... Loves the comic book yeah, movies. Yeah. So we we would not shut up about that and sports the whole time we were flying around all over the world. Well, so. we'll be doing that because we're going to talk to him about some of the movie news going on. Um, we'll talk to him about his stuff. Or also, there's there's a big announcement. If you clicked on the title, um, w- there's a big announcement yesterday that Marvel is going to release two miniseries, one about Scarlet Witch and one about Loki. I saw that on the Disney, on the streaming, Disney service. streaming service. Now you got that. Now you got Star Wars. Um, you've got the Lady and the Tramp stuff. I mean, they're 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 putting they're putting everything into it. So that's Disney's Patreon. Yeah, you it, know, it really is. You, you want. But you want to get exclusive yeah. content? Is it, you want to see Harloff and Ellis? Great. Join our Patreon. You want to see Loki? You want to see Star Scarlet Wars? Witch? You want to see Star Hey, you kids like Star Wars? Come on over to the streaming service. It's going to do gangbusters. I yeah, just want to know, because Disney owns everything, including like ESPN. Year, Are they going to lump that in with I mean, the ESPN, month. with the sports package? Because yeah, if you I, do that, the, the Junior I is, so. I am one direct TV NFL package away from well, cutting the cord. And well, also, hold it. yeah. And then there's also uh, Hulu. Like all of Disney's going to have all of their different things. I think there's going to be a bundle, and there's going to be an individual, and there's going to be a bundle price. And I want to get into, and that's the stuff that we're going to cover when we really kind of break down all that stuff. Because I want to get into that conversation. I want to talk oh, about. Oh, so I just thing. prematurely shot my watch. No, not necessarily. How we're going to really though? get into it. God, it felt good. Yeah, yeah. Good good tell for you, you, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're gonna, Let's we, try again in 15 minutes. Well, we're going to start with some. Um, Refraction. Was it? Well, you want to ask her about why she eats people before we move on? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I got I, that, Roxy. It, it, it's interesting you brought that up because last night I was watching, uh, I, I was trying to get into American Horror Story, the apocalypse uh, one debuted last night. Oh. Uh, I think it started like a week ago or two weird. weeks ago. What, what, anyway, people might have gotten eaten at some point. And, by Roxy? And I was looking at it, not necessarily by you, but I'm thinking that. If I had the choice between eating like a weird cream pasta dish or eating a mystery meat and not knowing what it is, I think I'd probably take the mystery meat. Really? Yeah. Hundred percent. I love me some protein. Now if it turns out being people, I'm gonna feel bad, but not as bad as I would if I go into some cream corn pasta disaster. Completely agree. You All don't right. know what's in there and, and what bodily fluids they put in there. What, right. what are you eating people for? Oh, fun. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'm eating them because they're dead. And they're available to me. Okay. So, the answer to this question is she's a fucking lunatic. Um, <laughs> let me. So, have you actually tasted flesh? No. Human flesh? Well, like when I bite my hands and stuff, but no, I haven't. Like <laughs> well, really. I, are you walking around the street like a like an insane person biting your hands? Kind of. Okay. Like I like take big chunks because well, some people bite their nails. I bite my skin. Yeah. And you I put eat marks it. on yourself. Like this, this. You guys never like you yeah. bite off the skin and the then you like. The whole ride here. No, I mean, but we gotta I, get a doctor. I used to love doing the Elmer's glue, and then you peel it off because like you're peeling your skin off. Yeah, that yeah, was fun. Yeah, hey, yeah. I do. Wanna, I know you're fired up today in general, and I want. So is Perry is Perry in up. the office yet? 
Oh yeah. Is Perry here? Uh, I will take. I don't see her. her down. She's probably still jet lagged. What time do people here? get to work here? No, I'm confused. I, 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 no, Perry. She's Perry, Perry normally. <laughs> Perry normally. Perry normally gets um gets here like nine o'clock. Yeah, she's I a, always. She's, but then there's like well, sometimes people's desks are full. Sometimes they're not. Do, mm-hmm. do you guys have like a work time? Yeah, You're supposed to be well, near nine o'clock. What, cops? Or go ahead. You have something on your mind? No, I'm just joking. What? No, go ahead. No, he, he's, he's trying to insinuate that Perry uh, maybe not be the the first one to practice, last one to leave personality that I always assume she. Was. Well, we'll do this. So let's do this. Um, Copster and Cody will let you get involved here too, and I'll, sure. I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. Um, you're not an employee, so you don't count. You don't um, count so you can come in whenever the hell you want. Is that true? Yeah. I, you I, come I, whenever you want? Well, I've, I've been offered many great uh, jobs in my life. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the way that I like to live my. I, I don't want to be. I, I No strings to hold me down. All right. So Copster and Cody. I'll need you to health gonna, insurance. I'm going to tell you the I people that you. I think are here. All the time early, mm-hmm. and you tell me if you agree okay. or disagree. Oh yeah, because I'm because I'm noticing. Okay, so Riley is usually here around nine o'clock. It's true. All the time. Mm-hmm. Roka gets here between nine and nine thirty. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know. I beat him here all the time, and nah. I'm always here by nine thirty for the show. So he's not here that early. I don't I know. It, it depends. I, on Riley, yes. The day, you yeah. know, if if. You know, heroes is uh, is is uh, happening. Right. He, but he's but he's earlier. he's in the vicinity. Yeah, vicinity. All right. Um, mm. The production guys, all the production guys are usually here. Thad's usually here at like eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, earlier. Thad is a stalwart that yeah. I remember from yeah. the the morning movie talk days. Right. Dennis, Dennis gets in a little like after one like, o'clock. No, that's no, not kidding. true. Um, Snyder that's hasn't fun. been to work in four months. Yeah, I haven't seen him. Yeah. Um, Tell you what, that Remsen guy. What time is Remsen's he supposed to be here? Remsen's always here. Sn- I don't know what Snyder's hours are. I have no idea. He works with Frosty, so I don't, I don't know what they're. Oh, okay. Frank's He's always never. here. Enough, Frank's always Snyder, here. Enough and for your shit. <laughs> yeah. Frank is. Uh, Frank is dressed like I believe he's dressed like Captain Jack Sparrow today. You got to be prepped. You got you to go to the meeting. What? You got to go to the meeting beforehand. That was supposed to be a surprise for Brett when he shows up. Ah, well, but, you know what. It fucking it, it, it send me a text. Is it that hard? <laughs> hey Beardo, give me the voice. I got I got yeah, I got yeah, three yeah, texts yeah. from Riley yeah. this morning, none of which said, Hey, by the way, there's a fucking guy in our office <laughs> dressed like a pirate. <laughs> and you expect me to just hold that information? Well, we're gonna find out why. We talked about this! Yeah, I know. And, uh, Jeez. Uh, uh, Mr. McCuga, the fact that that Ellis just blew that bit among other I didn't bits blow that, anything. Besides blowing you other bits it. today, what should Ellis do? Sniper! Thank you. You should sleep in the hallway. Sleep in the hallway. Sleep There's in the a hallway. lot of people in the yeah. hallway at this so point. <laughs> yeah. This it's is what I love about Ellis. You can tell he's never listened to an episode of this show. Why would I? Seriously. <laughs> Why would I listen to Collider Live? Because it's a great show. I, I listen to Movie Talk every yeah, day. Fuck you. You do not. <laughs> you do not. You give me notes about Movie Talk. Right. You don't actually listen to I it. I listen to it every hey, day. Hey, Ellis, I think you should be a little more conversational. Hey, jerk off. Did you watch the show in the last three I months? I have. I watched it yesterday. It was you, great. You did not. It was really good. You I thought you were so not. good hosting last week. It was amazing. Shut your, it was shut so your good. damn mouth. You were great last I week. I wasn't even on it last week. Oh, whatever. That's fine. Don't you feel like you were just guests, uh, like what, like an au- studio audience <laughs> on this show? I've right never now? seen you guys bicker like this. Well, you never. We bicker like this. When was the last time you watched the show? <laughs> I watch every show. Not this show. Oh. Do you really go They're back never. and watch your own program? Yeah. No, not, that's the not, saddest thing I've ever heard. See, well, that, that, I, that, I then do. You're not, that, that, that shocks me as a stand-up comedian that you would say that. Because He's you, never, you, never listen, you. you never listen to your sets. My sets, yeah. So what the fuck do you think this is? Yeah, what the fuck, Mark? Yeah, but this, this is, is a set. This is two hours. You go, you, well, I have a long... Do you understand how long my stupid drive is to this place? <laughs> and See, also, you can put God things on two times play. speed. It takes me an hour to get to... So, so you're listening to your I actually, I actually don't, but I, but I do listen. <laughs> but, I, but I do listen to bits here and there, and I'll go back, and I'll say, okay, the stuff that I want... Like, the bit that he did when he went out to interview everybody, I yeah. want to go, how can we make that better? Yeah, that's fun. Do, like, that kind of stuff. The full show, no. Like, yeah. I do listen to Afterthoughts on Fridays. I listen You're not to the on rundown. that. No, but I listen to them. Right, so, but that's what... Right. He's just talking about... Well, Afterthoughts... See, here's why I don't, I don't do Afterthoughts. And you're right. Like, I'll watch movie talk occasionally just for technical shit. Yeah. Make sure I'm looking to the right camera and stuff. But... Are you? With, uh, usually not. No. With Afterthoughts, the problem I have... With, it's a great show, but it, they're talking about us specifically. Yeah. So, from a critical standpoint, I like... You don't want to hear it. No, no. I like oh. knowing the issues that they might have. Like, how we can improve. But after a while, you just... It feels like you're jerking yourself off like eh, I bet they're going to talk about how good I was this week See, and I don't, don't want to do that I don't think that's fair I don't think that's, that's all they talk about I think that what I think what they do is they have conversations in general about just people that list that are in this space listening to this this sure. type of material the stuff that they whether it's TV talk 
this show, they're not just talking about what people do right and wrong. They have like legit conversations about it. It's actually why I like it. I think that it's it's not it's not about look at listen how great this show is. It's just a, it's a conversation I yeah, like to hear about. They're very good at it's it. It's an but... after show. Like for example, for example, when people are talking about say like uh, you know uh, the Ozark, an after show about the Ozarks, right? Yeah. They're not necessarily. I think it's just called Ozark. The Ozark, whatever. <laughs> or, uh, I know. I just said it's just Ozark. I'm gonna take this. <laughs> the Ozarks. Yeah. The Ozark. Are you down in the basement watching the Ozarks again? <laughs> <laughs> I I was. I wish I. Would. Fucking basement. Um, you have one in LA? Oh, no, God, I, wish I, I missed the basement. basement. Oh, yeah. jungle room. But anyway, so you that whole know. thing was derailed. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. All uh, right. Sorry, guys. Monotone Thanks. and joyless. Yeah, that, is, that, is, that is what they refer to Beardo as. What did they refer to Beardo as? Mon- monotone and joyless. <laughs> they, they, that, that sounded it's, very monotone. It's pretty, it's pretty accurate. But yeah, I have to agree with Mark. I, I don't amazing. list. I mean, I, I love what they do, and I appreciate yeah. that they do it. But it's I, a ringing I, endorsement for I don't, the show, guys. I don't, I don't listen to it because I don't I also don't retweet when people say nice things about mm. me or I feel like that's like hey look at me look at people love me look at me look at me so I think listening to it to me does seem jerking yourself off a little bit and going well what did they say about me now or exactly. Wait, can we pause for a second yeah. because that's not what we were talking about we were talking about how Ellis doesn't listen to this show yeah the conversation yeah. grew Roxy, I was talking about something completely different yesterday and you started talking about eating people so it goes off the rails completely a hundred percent but yeah. I, but where is do you think that we're always talking about you on the show? No, 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 no. no. He's so talking that's not about something why you else. don't listen. No, I, I literally don't have the time. That, like seriously, time. when I'm when I'm not here, right? I I like to, to sports. I like to live my life. Yeah, he's traveling you know? and yeah. having a great life. And, and it's also like I I trust Christian to the point where I know that this is not going to be some sort of train wreck where I have to tune in and be like, oh boy, you're wrong. What kind of PR disaster do we have to clean up? Now? Like it's it, it's a fine ship. It's right. a steady ship. And at some point, I just need to check out of this particular space. Hmm. Got my, I, I get it. I, but just to just to clarify fire. that I'm not crazy, you did mention afterthoughts as something where they're talking about us. No, he did. Us. He did. He did. Okay. Yeah, he did. So you he did. did. Yeah. I, I just was confused on why we were talking because I, I was wondering if you thought we were jerking you off yeah. on this show. Well, but no, you, no, I can't like reach him. Right, listen, listen, it's, just, it's going off the rails. <laughs> um, what I what I will what I'm going to tell you is this because um, I disagree with you both completely. I think that for fans. These two, so I think that the fans that want that out there to listen to the to their show. I know you're talking about the fans should listen to it because it's not you guys. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm talking about me specifically. Oh no, I support the fans. Listen, I, right. oh please, they're great guys. I, I have if I DMs just, with them if, about if, being if, on, and it never happens. Right. It's great. If I'm a quarterback um, for an NFL team. Probably not listening to a lot of sports talk radio right. that talks about the NFL. Is point. my point. Yeah, yeah, if point. I, I'm a huge NFL fan, right. so I listen but to you don't everything. Wanna, you don't want to. So if you were on uh, the, the Orioles, we'll give you right. I think you wouldn't listen to a podcast about the Orioles. I, I, if I was on the Orioles, I, I, I wouldn't want anybody to know I was on the Orioles. If you were on, a, on the Spurs, yeah, you wouldn't listen to an after show about the Spurs. Yeah, and, and, and that's my point is that huh. as much as study and preparation and yeah. game film does play a part in what we do, there's also something to be said for keeping your own mental sanity and just getting out of your own head and living that, a see, life. That argument I, I will understand. The other one about the, the jerk and off stuff, I don't because I think that it has been su- – I know Fernandez listens to that show and to hear it because it's very helpful. And stuff. Like Again, I've told them this. There are things that they say sometimes they are completely off base. But there's other things they say like, well, that makes sense. And I even – there was an uh, the, the whole my whole decision to jump off of social media was accredited to them. Wait, what? Yeah, I took I shut down social media off my phone. Took it off. Took Twitter off. Oh, took Facebook dude, off. dude, really? Took it off. This is a yeah. this is not you. What? This is a high school I, move. I agree. It's I not high school. Yeah, it's, like high school it's like you got mad. Do Somebody you know, didn't go to the prom with you, so you, you know, didn't delete you know all the your messages, stuff. Messages and stuff that I got from my, my friends, my family, threats that I got. I yeah, same, I, uh, same, same. I I got a number of those people kicked off the Twitter because I went and reported them, and then Twitter sends you an update, and so yeah. and, and so they're done with. So I understand all that. Yeah. But it's also Somebody like ever get your phone number and call you. You're gonna want. Yes. You're going to want to to interact with fans it's not, I know you you're going to want to interact with the people at some point every day on this show we take phone calls okay every okay. day so so you're going well, back to Monday, like Tuesday, old school radio mentality yeah I, there's a possibility that I might pop into like the the Schmodown like Facebook group and do some stuff and promote there. That, like, that's my point exactly. Yeah. You want to get rid of Twitter, I understand that. Yeah. I think Instagram you're going to stick around on. I'm, I mean, I've kept the Instagram to kind of check out, you know, just to make sure there's certain things. If someone sells, sends me a Blu-ray or something, too, I'll post it, too. Um, yeah. But like this, <laughs> Universal sends you to Greece. You'll yeah. get back on the well, Instagram. Would, but there's no, oh, yeah. man, I'd be in Greece right now. How do you feel different? When, when did you knock the apps out? Monday. And then how do you feel? Much better. 
Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it's just I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to deal yeah. with people saying stupid shit about it. I like. I, li- I didn't like Predator. Well, you should die. <laughs> I'm gonna cut off your feet and send them to your grandmother because you didn't like a movie that I liked. I'm gonna put it in the comment section that your whole family should die because you didn't like a red cape and the way it looked in a trailer. <laughs> Fuck yourself. Sorry, that one was me. Sorry. Yeah, that yeah, was actually Fuck coffee. yourself. It's like, it's, it's, you can have, it's like the separate opinions, one thing, too, and it's like, you're grouchy now. Uh, uh. And it's like, who are you? Why do you do this? Why are you so stressed out? Oh, fuck yourself. I'm going to delete it off my phone. That's the thing. <laughs> I think, I think we point. might take your phone away from you in general. <laughs> in general. I think that might Kristen, be the next step. you're way too like obsessive of a, of a person, though, to not have social media. I am as well. I don't mean that as an insult. I'm not telling you I'm going to never go back. Like I, one week, I think. Yeah. Just take a take a... It's a vacation. You're taking that social media vacation. Know. Pat Oswalt yeah, so did that addicted. a couple uh, yeah. couple months. He went off. Uh, he went off uh, Facebook uh, and Twitter and stuff for like two months. He took the entire summer off. Great. Yeah, we were all heroin yeah. users, all of you. And you're just like, well, yeah, you should still you should still use heroin. Oh no, I you totally agree. With I don't. I think it's all I, bullshit. I do think I don't even want to be a part yeah. of it. I think I have a pretty healthy relationship with it, where because I don't check in on it a lot. Because I realize just how specifically Twitter is trying to filter news yeah. that's going to either get me irate or passionate, where it, it's so uh, centralized to who the user is, where all my my feed updates, it's like either very like anti Trump shit, or it's like Burger King released yeah, a new sandwich so, and stuff. So, like it's just for me, and I don't want to get my news that is just aimed at me. I want to be able to select what outlets I'm getting my news that's from. The whole thing. I'm just so done with it. It's like you know, everybody hates each other, and it, it's like. You you can just, just everybody's desensitized with like human emotion now on social media, and it's like like even yesterday I had a conversation with somebody, and it was like who was it? Call uh, out? Like, no, 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 no. It was, it actually, yeah. it was because it was on because the person like texted me. It was just a conversation that we have that that, and it's just inside of the text that I was like I don't want to deal with this kind of stuff. But the text, not that person's fault, but that's the way we communicate. And then we had a conversation, and things got done like that. It's just face to face or on the right. phone. Did I see you talking done. to them after the show? I don't think so. Mm. And it's like face to face. Who? Who? What did what? Remsen text you? When? Who? What? It, what? Just, it doesn't matter. What? Who? Um, but anyway, what? look, what? listen, our guest is sitting outside. And I want to bring him in because I want to. Frank is not dressed like a pirate. No. Um, I want to talk to him about uh, movie news and then yeah. we're talk about all his great stuff. So, um, uh, so beat it, Roxy, right? No, no you beat it. You, <laughs> you sit over there on that, on that seat. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. That's it. What happened? Okay. It just went over. What happened to your chalice? Pain. I just looked at him. It was Did still there. I'll miss you, man. Myself. You used like to have a king's floor. cup, and now yeah, you're now just a little Game of Thrones thing. Brett, yeah. all over the Brett place. Brett told me he didn't want to be my friend before the show started. I did not. Yeah. He so said Brett, he didn't want to be anybody's let's, let's friend. Let's have our guest in. Let's have Steve Byrne come in now. And there he is. Steve Come Byrne is joining the show. Everybody, Steve Byrne, thank you so much. Roxy. I didn't and eat breakfast. I think my breath smells pretty bad. Come sit with me. <laughs> you get the uh, you get the set. handheld because yeah. because oh, yeah, you're yeah. a stand up comedian. You're used to using that yeah. mic, huh? Yes. Yeah, see- <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> so, Steve, your dad mows the lawn weird. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the throw by, right now. I appreciate that. <laughs> How you doing, Steve? Uh, great, thanks for having it's me. Good to have it. you back. We have, well, I guess the last time I got a chance to talk to you, movies and that kind of stuff was on the Schmo Show. But then we ran into each other when we at for Mitzi's Mitzi's, I guess um, the, the the memorial that they had mm-hmm. for her at the Comedy Store. Yeah, we, we were hanging up by the pinata. Yeah, we were shooting. The, the <laughs> 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 and we were shooting the shit about movies again, and I figured that's what we'll just all the stuff that's going on in the comic book world, movie world. There's a lot of stuff um, in the streaming service that they're doing. There's the Captain Marvel trailer. What did you think of the trailer? Did you see it? Yesterday? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm excited. I'll, yeah, I'll always, you know, it's just like here's my money. Yeah, take yeah. it. Of course, I it, it looks. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, you, I didn't get much like. Story. I, I think just the spectacle of seeing it. It's just like okay, I'll go yeah. see it. But I didn't. I didn't really. I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was like excited by the trailer. But it looked pretty cool. And I, seeing her trajectory and all the different you know facets of her life, yeah. I was like, well, this is gonna be much well. more a think. personal story yeah. than you usually get with like a, yeah. a Marvel announcement movie. It's right, just like, right. yeah. look at this huge enemy we're fighting. Yeah. Yeah. This is more Brie Larson and Cap- right. her character Captain Marvel, just like trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. Did this really happen? Did this really happen? Yeah. Then, she, then she just. Punches an yeah. old lady in the fucking face. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Steve is doing this to me. He gets Sorry. me started on comic books. <laughs> and the next thing you know, I'm talking to myself yeah. on a plane for three hours because he's already asleep. <laughs> asleep. But one of the things that will get Steve passionate is is Henry Cavill as Superman oh, yeah. or the lack of him being in Man of Steel, too. Are you too. pissed off about that? 
We don't I'm even a know what it huge is, Superman fan. Yeah, yeah. Huge. I remember. Huge fan of the Donner film. Um, seeing all the things, the documentaries, all the beasts, everything. I, I, I love it, love it, love it. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just bummed that they can't seem to get it. Correct. Get their shit together. Even Man yeah. of Steel, it's like good. Yeah. But I like it. I like but it, it wasn't too. Great. She's, she's miserable when it comes <laughs> to Man of Steel. Yeah, she Just you know that she one gets. scene ruins the whole what fucking scene? film. Is everything what okay scene? at home? Dark <laughs> like, no, is it is not. <laughs> Thank you for asking, sir. Jesus I know. Is this is how you treat our guests when he comes into our house? Uh, No. I, I, what I will say, though, is... How are your cats? Mm, <laughs> what happened? I only have three. Thank you. Uh, I... I think that it's interesting, like, watching people tiptoe around saying that they don't love a trailer, like, it doesn't really move them. It's it's a weird climate that we're in that people are like, crap, uh, uh, this is a, a female-based film. How do we, like, Here get we around Here we not go. saying... Oh, Christ. <laughs> no. And... Oh, we get it. You voted for Obama, too. Come on. <laughs> and I'd vote for go. him a third time. Yes. Um, <laughs> China. I think, but, like, we did it yesterday on the show yes. where it's like... It's so hard. <laughs> Women rock, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, good Thank to be you. Here. Sorry, was that? Oh, fuck. Hashtag me too. Hashtag me too. I'm so Just brave. Yeah. I'm so yeah. brave. He touched me on the shoulder. Did you like the? Uh, did you yeah, like the? Be a lawsuit at the end of this. No, I, it was fine. Yeah. I didn't love it. Don't you? It was, so that's was, how I felt. I, I was yeah. like, yeah, but I'll go see it. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I'll, I'll go. see it. Yeah. But the trailer It'll was be great. I liked. I liked the thing because I thought it. I thought it set it up because he loves women. I do love women, but I think that it also it sets up as a fa- as a father yeah. of two daughters. True. I love women. And, and I think husband. it's I think it set it up well to where and I said this yesterday. It's two minutes long, but it's a teaser, and it's just supposed to get you excited for. It's what's not a, a teaser. It is a teaser. It's called a pink spoon. You, but by the way, okay, did you enjoy the sample you got or not? Do you want the, the Sunday? Are you, you want the Sunday? Are you You're gonna get the Sunday. It, it's, go. it's a full blown trailer. <laughs> it's not a full blown trailer. It's a teaser leading up. Just because it's two minutes doesn't mean that's a full trailer. So they're calling it trailer number one. It doesn't matter. Listen, a, te- that a, a teaser semantics don't matter. A to me. teaser is something. Like a, a full trailer is what that. tells you what the story is and what you're gonna get from the movie overall. Is what the, who the main characters are, who wh- where it's going as far as the overall arc of the story. That is not in this movie. That is just there's a bunch of images to trailer. let you know. You can get again. Like Steve said, you see the trajectory Thank of her you. life and where that's coming from, but you don't know what. You don't know how. You know, there's like little teases. Oh, she comes from another planet. It's fine. It's that's fine. It. I know. I we saw it. We... Yeah, there you go. A teaser is a short trailer that doesn't give away any plot <laughs> details, but gives us a glimpse of the tone and characters of the movie. Thank you. Uh, it was a long teaser. Yeah, Roxy, sit yeah. down. No, but, that, but if somebody releases a trailer, you can't just call it a teaser. Like those it's are a two, teaser. Those are two different things. You know, when you go to Comic Con, they're like, "Here's this trailer and here's this teaser." It's a teaser trailer. No, but it's a trailer, though, teaser where they trailer. tease things. It's a trailer that teases things. So it's I always teaser. felt like when Justice League trailer. came out, there were like eight trailers, American. and I felt like I'd seen the film already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want to give away too much, which is why, again, to Roxy's point, if this is the first teaser trailer, so it was too long, if it's a teaser trailer. Because a teaser, I agree with Roxy, should be 30 seconds to a minute, regardless of what you think should be in it. It, it, was, it was a long teaser. Now, I was happy because I liked it, and my favorite part about it was seeing Captain Marvel go to Blockbuster, because yeah. that tells you exactly the time frame for the movie. Yes. Here's something a fan brought up on Movie yes, Talk yes, yesterday. Yes, I, I want more. Yes. <laughs> they said, Don't stop, please. <laughs> they said that what? In, because it's a 90s movie, that the trailer should have had the In a World guy. Or, or oh. somebody doing that impression. That would have been amazing. Yeah. But I think that, I think that died, would have... It, it, you John could have Bailey. had Pablo Francisco come in and do it. Yeah. Like, John Bailey. I just... I think I that... Uh, you did? I think oh, it would have taken away from the... Can Mark have his moment? A Martian mm. away. <laughs> Both of you... Hey, you're just as bad as she is. No one interrupted. But Mark, I'm excited. Like, when you talk, I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait. Is this what it's like on the, on the plane? Pretty much. Yeah? Pretty detail? much. Yeah. Because I know, because again, Steve and I, we met like probably 10, 15 years ago. When Mark's is saucer of milk, and I can't, you can't stop lapping it up. You can't. <laughs> I want more. Lactose what intolerant. Say? How many times is, so you went, you Steve's went together. Steve's a cat I nourish right. from my breath. <laughs> but how many times have you guys been on the road together? Because you, you go on the road a lot with Cap a lot. So first time I what featured. Does that mean? Caparulo. Oh. John Caparulo. First time I featured for uh, for Steve, it was might have been my first time featuring for anybody on the road, was okay. at the, the Fort Lauderdale and Do you Improv. regret that? Uh, giving Mark uh, the support or like to encourage him to pursue stand up? Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, you're good enough. You should come. Uh, no, right. no. Yeah. 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 Now, he um, he realized this mistake yeah, very now quickly. Now the phone calls don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for, hey, Steve. Just, uh, I saw your calendar and. Uh, <laughs> if, if you want to know Steve Byrne and I was relationship, he's Shooter McGavin, and I'm the guy that's like, hey, Shooter, <laughs> oh, yeah. you want to go to Red Lobster? <laughs> Perfect. Are you but we're all, Irish? 
Irish and Korean, yes. What? Why? You didn't do even you... go to Wikipedia to look me up. <laughs> mm -mm. You just did you spend two minutes on. Yeah. Is, is that which way is that ring? Married. The, the Sorry. Mar it's, yeah. That's your that's your wedding ring. It's my wedding ring. Yes. Oh, and that's yeah. why it's there. That's actually yeah. really cute. Are you Irish? Uh, no, but um, I, I like those things. But I usually see them like as promise rings or whatever. That is a new thing that people do. Yeah, uh, they feels like a things. criticism. No, I, yeah. I, I was gonna make fun of him. I was preparing to because <laughs> if it was a promise ring, that's stupid as shit. Right, but, but it's, it's his wedding ring. So you're cool sweet. with it. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Every see, time you mm -hmm. see this, just remember I promised to go see Captain Marvel. There you go. With you. <laughs> then, <laughs> then it would be facing the other way. That's like an outward promise. Why are we having our first fight? We're like, I don't know. You guys are adorable. Why, why, it's why why really, as I'm telling you, you I could just uh, not even say anything. Just let this thing happen. Maybe this is why Roxy's been so uh, antagonistic recently. She's she having issues with, with, with training. Yeah. She's training for burn. Um, hey, is Riley in the booth? Yeah. All right, good. Let's, <laughs> Riley, uh, there's a nice way of saying communicating. Yes. Right. What the fuck is that? Screaming without a microphone like an animal in the back. Let's do it. Yes, I, is I'm anybody here. hungry here? Yeah. I'm so Stand hungry, here. and my breath smells. Okay, does it smell, Steve? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, guys, so Riley, let me uh, tell us some of the movie news, because I want to get some of the opinions. If we can get through one story, it would be amazing, but let's try it anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you guys an appetizer here, uh, movie news. Grumpy Old Men remake with Eddie Murphy. And who else? Possibly Sam Jackson. He looks Sam 38. Sam Jackson has he not does. signed on. How yet. are you going to do a grumpy old man with two black guys? They look phenomenal. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I was wondering that. And That's when true. we talked about movie talk yesterday, yeah. I suddenly had an epiphany. Eddie Murphy yeah. has played very old characters before, and it's been entertaining as hell. Yeah, that's true. But the, is he the, going the to professors. don the makeup and all, or is yeah, he just going to be him? I think they're going to probably put some makeup on him, too, because I think that you've gotten that when coming to America. You've gotten that yeah. in uh, Nutty Professor. Yeah. And I think to try Great to do movie. it again, that you accept him doing that. And I think him and back and forth with Sam Jackson, and we've seen them before I know they were in Coming America, but they didn't really have a brief interaction. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. when Sam Jackson it's robs McDowell's. Yeah, it's yeah. his first movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tim Story's directing it, uh, who did the uh, the Ride Along yeah, movies. He also did Fantastic Four. Which are which are not great, mm -hmm. but... Pass. Just, I'm happy to see Eddie Murphy in something. I kind of want this to be, at the very least, a hard PG-13. Because I want because Rumpy Old Men was PG-13. Walter yeah. Matthau, Jack Lemmon, Burgess Meredith steals that movie. I gotta be honest, you lost me at Tim Story. Okay. Yeah, you lost me at Tim Story because it, 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 this is gonna this is gonna really rely on the director and, and the comedic timing of the direction and and I that guy's done nothing. Pretty sure me. with the two stars you have here, I think there's gonna Doesn't be. Doesn't matter. I don't care how great, great chemistry. I don't care could, how good the chemistry is if, if it's not cut together the right way or, or directed the right way who would you want it to have direct something like this someone with more comedy chops I mean like you know even like, oh, I, brought like her, a, I brought her up yesterday like a newer director what no, no. Like, a, like maybe somebody in the room right <laughs> now sure. guys mm -hmm. I still drive a Saturn come on but you know, no. But I, you know, I will, t I will tell you, absolutely, one hundred percent, because I know his comedic timing, I know his instincts, and I right. would say that someone like you would would be better. I've seen. I don't want Michael Bay ever directing comedy. He's done it before. You know? Like Neil Brennan would be mm -hmm. somebody that. Yeah, and I and I also get. I mean, Tim Story is Afri African American man too. They want to make also make sure that this they're doing their version of of this for Af African American community of grumpy old men. And Neil is an honorary doing. African American. <laughs> he is. He is really. Yeah. Yeah. That's how that works. But I don't know, man. Um, yeah, the Tim Story just he's, his movies stink to be honest with you. So you are saying you won't even see it. I'll go see it. Okay. It's my job, but I mean, I'm just I'm not excited about it. I think I would be more more excited with a different director. Um, and you know what? And it's funny because I don't know what Ryan Coogler's comedic chops are, but I, he's done so many different things. I like I'm, his, the comedy that he hit in Black Panther when it, when it was up. It worked. Sure, I would like to see Ryan Coogler do some stuff. And maybe Ava DuVernay try to do her hand at comedy. That to me would be would be interesting. You were just saying the other day that you will never doubt again a uh, look him in the eyes when you talk to him. I know. I was trying to remember what, 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 what exactly you said. <laughs> oh, if he's a woman, I shouldn't look him in the eyes. Uh, you, were, you were saying that you will never doubt again a comedic duo or a comedic director going to drama, right. but you feel differently, vice versa? No, not necessarily. It's like, like, Tim Story just has tried to do comedy it, before. He's just not good. And it's just not up yet. He's just not good. Yeah, is it, it, I, well, Barbershop I, is I funny. For, did he yeah, do he reverse did do barbershop? barbershop? Yeah, all right. Great. Yeah, first barbershop's okay, but like he, um, you're talking about the Russo brothers going from like yeah, comedy well, you into. Ma you mentioned a few of them. Actually. Yeah, Russo brothers, and I forget. I mean, whoever I mentioned the other day, but there's they're because they're they, they they switched over. They started somewhere. They went somewhere else, and it delivered. This guy just hasn't delivered for me so far. But what the fuck do I know? Um, a lot. 
Thank you. It's your job, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I got you. Anyway, the fact that Eddie Murphy's in a movie yeah. excites I'm excited, me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the last few I've not been excited for, but this this premise I would go see. There's like there's one scene in Tower Heist. Yeah. Okay. And it's yeah. classic Eddie Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's like oh, that's the guy. That's the guy. Well, what's the scene? You, you know, get flashes of it. Yeah. Guys, I yeah. know how yeah. excited you are about this possibility. I want to get your take on this because Eddie Murphy had kind of teased coming back to doing stand up. Yep. You think he'd be able to hit now? Don't. I don't. Just know. don't even do it. Don't even just I agree with don't you. don't play for the wizards. Let's remember you as a bull. That's the way I think. I couldn't agree more. See, but what if he goes out to be even bigger and better? I just don't think no. he's got it in you him. Think no way. No, no, there's no way because he. I think a comic's mindset. You, you're kind of like. It, sorry, let me talk to a comic. Um, I think you. Can, <laughs> <laughs> I think when you start, that's kind of when the hard drives burned. And it's like, okay, you're, you're somewhat a product of your generation, and you can only keep with the time so much. So I think that, you know, you go back and you watch some of that stuff. It's like, it's so funny, but it's you definitely couldn't do that today. And I think At that... All. Uh, hey, Eddie, uh, we got to make, uh, <laughs> make some quick cuts. Well, but there's also, <laughs> he was, there's also a 22, 23-year-old guy hitting that kind of stuff back yeah. then and getting away with it, too. And I haven't been on the stage in like 10 years, right? And I know that if I went back, I, I thought about going about the comedy store and doing some stuff, too. And I'm like, well, where... I mean, I mean, my stuff is, you know, still off your point. Ten years ago is a little, is dated, and I have to do yeah. coming sticking up with what's going on. And you on also now. wore a uh, purple leather jumpsuit, I, I believe, I when did. you were performing. It's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, know. I should actually. You come back in that. It's my only gimmick. That's but it's also like, back. what are you going to talk about when you you've been famous since you're eighteen? And a multimillionaire and famous for like, what right. are you going to say that's going to be relatable to everybody? Right, so and, many things. And, and that community changed. and the yeah. black community that, that's going to be that's holding you on this pedestal and looking up to you. How are you going to relate to? I I, I just don't. I see it as a lose lose. The thing I about Eddie you. Murphy though, he was a great storyteller on stage. So if you have stories that you can tell, as opposed to like what's going on in the news, like I look at him more of not personal life, but him as like a Cosby where you're, you're telling stories more than anything else. But I agree with Steve where as excited as I would be to be at the comedy store and see Eddie Murphy go up, it'd be a legendary moment. I don't need him to do stand up ever again. I would love to see yeah. him host SNL. Because when he was Absolutely. at the 40th anniversary, and it's like, oh, shit, here comes Eddie. But he and didn't, he didn't do, do anything. anything. Yeah. It was like, oh, right. come on. And, and I think going off another um, reference there, too, it would be like watching Tyson get in the ring one more time, and then he just gets knocked out. And you're like, Ugh. But why are yeah. you, you guys are banking on the fact that he's going to suck? What if he's amazing? I don't understand why you guys have no faith. And I watch people all the time that I can't relate to for shit. But most of the people who get up there, I, I'm like, I, yeah, I don't relate to a single word you're goddamn because, saying. Because but it's funny. There's more to it. These guys hit the pavement like – Every day they're doing probably like two two shows a night, and like it, Eddie Murphy just kind of crafting. He'd have to start working out again. Yeah, he's have he to would. start going all the. He would. I don't know if he's got. I think there's a legacy know. that that a lot of people where we look at him like athletes to to a certain extent. Where like the Michael Jordan Wizards comparison, where I was all for Jordan going back to the Wizards just because I want to see him play one more time. But Eddie Murphy, did, like he has such a we hold him in such high regard that it would almost taint the experience if he came back for some people. But here's the massive difference between that analogy and what you're actually talking about. The older you get as an athlete, the worse you become because your body is giving out on you. The, your brain is not giving out on you as a comedian at his age. It, it, it is, though. But Eddie, Eddie <laughs> like, at a stand up, age, but he, his? he was a moment in time. that He was dangerous. He was fresh. He was new. Right. Like... You know, it was like there was prior, and then there was this new, like, it was like, what the fuck is this? Dynamite. And he just blew it up. Yeah. And I, I don't think you could ever replicate that. And people have this fantasy of, like, we want to see that guy. You're never going to see that guy At again. All. It doesn't exist. It exists on DVD or whatever, yeah. but you're never going to see that again. He's going to get a mindset, like you said before. So, yeah. all right. Um, Riley, what else you got in the movie news? Well, you know, something just broke from uh, Bloomberg that What's they're going to be expanding Piscopo's Walking coming back. Dead. Is that what it is? That <laughs> it? Are you, are you I, I, Riley, oh, say it one more time. Sorry. You know you're not supposed to step on people. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry about that. No, no, I'll, I'll wait. Big news. It's cool. He's going to be Frank yes, Sinatra. In the yeah. 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 They're going to do a Frank Sinatra action picture. That's great. All right, sorry, Riley. What do you got to say? Uh, they might be making some uh, Walking Dead movies. Okay. They are, movies? Bloomberg is reporting they're, they're branching off into new narrative series looking at mobile games, but one of the things that AMC wants to do is actually make a Walking Dead movie. With, with the Walking Dead 
cast? It depends. I probably no, be, no, no comment on the cast. They just want to expand this, this series into movies, into other forms of uh, narratives. And uh, that's what they're looking at. I now. think a movie is a smart idea. Blech. I I disagree with you. I think I think the movie well, is a I didn't smart say I didn't idea. Like it. You just you just threw up on yourself. You eat people. You don't yeah. Know. I I it's think that you could like do that know. movie. I think you could do something around like the Twenty Eight Days Later type, um, and you could put you can have new characters. Because it's not the only – the entire world has not been covered on this show. What's happening at the same time that our people in Atlanta, wherever they are, you could do so many new things with this. Do you this. watch Fear? Yeah, but I mean that's – Fear is you also – yeah, I mean I've, I watched a bunch of it too. I know it's also – it covers Los Angeles and, and other mm-hmm. things too. But I think that you can you can expand. And I think in, you can just tell one cool story in a, with a couple of movies, standalone movies, that you could with, get the right writer and the right director and you could really do something fun with it. Steve, you a Walking Dead guy? Never saw it. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you not I, a horror guy? I love horror, but okay. I just, I, I just, I, there's so much now. I, I, you guys cover everything, but I, I just, it, it becomes overwhelming, and I'm just like, I, I don't want to lose that 20 hours. I'd rather <laughs> right. that, that, learn to play guitar, a, but I've never learned to play guitar. No, it'd be great. No. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do a band? Where we just learn to play guitar and then yeah, yeah. next year we go overseas and, yeah. we, and we play some music for the yeah for the guys and gals. So you got to evolve it. You got to evolve your act. <laughs> Yeah. I've always thought of you as a guitar act without the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he's got he, a terrible singing voice. That's how I mean, he brings me up on stage. Good. Well, he's a great guitar comic. Yeah. Uh, guitar did not make it through yeah. customs. You know, even though you're, you have a, one of the worst voices I've ever heard, you really do commit when you do karaoke. Yeah, you I do. crush karaoke. Wait, what? This is news to me. You've got a terrible voice. And you can tell everybody. <laughs> they really try to head up the This is your song. I mean, it's, it may yeah. be quite simple, but... <laughs> Now tip. that it's done, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words oh my how God. wonderful life is while you're in the world. Yeah. By the way, he was he closed his eyes. He was really. I've heard though. way worse. He, really? Yeah. Thank I don't you. know. Yeah. You haven't seen his act. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, Riley, you got anything else? I'd like to point out that I've, oh. I've done karaoke with Mark Ellis a few times, yeah. and it's, it's brutal. on a scale of 1 to 10, it's a solid 2. You yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> Most of the time yeah. I do karaoke I is for you, Josh's can birthday, I, can and I, I do sing a quick happy rendition birthday to him. of, uh, of Panama sing by that? Mark Ellis. You know, you just crack Panama. The dun, dun, dun. Panama. You're really getting roasted today, huh? This is uh, You're getting roasted. See, I don't mind what you just did. I have video of Josh McCuga. The problem with Josh McCuga, Josh makes the mistake most karaokeers do, yeah. is that he gets blackout drunk before he hits the stage. I see McCuga. McCuga does. I've I've done. Uh, and act with Makuga. Makuga crushes. Oh, because you were on stage with, with him. I yeah. have yeah. seen no, all of you why. guys perform. See, Marcus stage. And by is far and away, Christian is the best at karaoke well, of the three of you guys. Get the fuck out of here! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Makuga, you've got the moves more, but Christian's got like a rocker's voice. It's at, it, it comes out of when nowhere. When did you see him sing? No way. I, well, I used to be invited Listen, to Makuga's birthday parties. Not doors. anymore. Hey, why are you turning on me? I was just giving you a good, good props. <laughs> I'm the best, and everybody knows We this. sang Beastie Boys. Together, we did. You little we bitch. crushed that. We did. <laughs> we did one karaoke show, and we were doing the Schmoes live show at Room Five. Yeah. And he went up and the uh, fucking he did a door song for like ten minutes, and the Lizard King walked half the room within minute five. That's not doing true, Riders right? on the Storm. Not true. Everybody was <laughs> boring as hell. Minds. That's really. I will do a karaoke I challenge. Should. I didn't talk you about his songs. I will do a karaoke I'll do it in front challenge. Three hundred people. I'll do it in front of a thousand people. Then let's do it. If I will do it in front of Heinz Field. It's better than what the Steelers are. <laughs> Putting on the field right now. All right, Riley, you got Sorry. anything else before we uh, go to break here? Yeah, one last movie news uh, thing that we we were all shocked about yesterday. Stan and Ollie, oh. uh, that that trailer came out and nobody knew there was a like a movie with John C. Riley and Steve Coogan about uh, Laurel Hardy and uh, it just came out of nowhere. I'm so glad you brought this up. So yeah. they're doing a Laurel and Hardy movie and Steve Coogan to me, they're, they're pushing John C. Riley and he looks great. But Steve Coogan sounds just like Stan. I mean, wow. he sounds just like. And I was a big uh, Laurel and Hardy guy growing up. Like, yeah. And my dad used to show us uh, March of the Wooden Soldiers, and that was like our Christmas movie. And listening to the two of them, put a, if you can put, pull a clip uh, of it. Mark, guys. wasn't your Christmas movie I Spit on Your Grave? I was- <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Silent Night, Deadly Night. Silent Night Deadly Part Night. two is the best yeah. one. That's yeah, like after a night of pizza. I never, never grew up with uh, with Laurel and Hardy. You, dude, I, did, are you a Laurel and Hardy guy? Never. When I was growing up, yeah, it was yeah. always it was always on Laurel and Hardy, Three Stooges. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
for sure. All the Steve went to comedy rascals. school from a young age. He went to like right one of here. these private boarding schools where they teach you how to do stand up. It was the same school that Jackie Chan attended uh, in China, where you're learning constantly to perform. This is not going to show up on my IMDb <laughs> page, is it? Like I can take this credit off? Is yeah. that maybe so? But look, look at first of all, turn it up, guys. And New music. Oh, oh my God! Music. Yeah. Well, listen, listen to, to Coogan. Hollywood legends Mr. Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy arrived in Britain today as they embarked on a national tour. We're doing this while we're waiting for this new picture to come together. So I'm going to make sure that this tour gets off on the right foot. It looks just like it is the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> it's amazing that you two are still going strong. Come on, Ali. Still using the same old material. <laughs> there they are. Such a wonderful. That makeup job is so good. Yeah. It's okay. Two double acts for the price of one. <laughs> Pretty empty last night. I guess people just don't want to see Laurel and Hardy anymore. It sounds just like... No, that's like... Pushing you, but you, are <laughs> you know, Stan. You could have said goodbye, Oliver, a long time ago. We had a good thing going, but you had this big chip on your shoulder because I did a picture with someone else. I couldn't sleep for days when they told me what you did. It's like watching the Schmoes documentary. Yeah, it's lucky. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Lucky to spend my life with a man who hides behind his typewriter. Anyway. All right, you can turn it off. Um, he does look. He looks, I mean, they I both. It's crazy. Yeah. And this movie had uh, no. You you didn't see it at TIFF, right? No, it wasn't playing at TIFF. It wasn't playing no. at TIFF. That, that's what gets me nervous. It comes out in like October. There's no buzz on it, and yeah. it could just be dull. M maybe that's their method. Like maybe they're just no trying to about come it, out though. of left field. But is it is it is just not significant enough? I guess we're not enough people remember. Maybe so, but I mean, like, it, it, there's tons of shit out there that people don't know about at all. Like that, the, the Toronto Film Festival that they just have. That there's all this buzz now for all these movies. You would see that if this movie was good enough, they yeah. would have played it at that festival to get Who's some buzz. Who's doing it? Um, I don't know who directed it. Byron Allen. <laughs> no, which which studio? Uh, it's Do you guys a, know? Smaller. There's a, there's a certain submission process to get into TIFF though that takes a while. So I, I don't know if they have the movie John completed or if it's even ready to be screened yet. So I'm not going to say that. Oh, it wasn't a TIFF. Yeah. So it's going to be terrible. That looks pretty impressive. There's just no buzz on it, is what I'm saying. Like, no. The first time I ever heard about it was yesterday when the trailer dropped. Yeah. That, that, these are two legends. Could be a yeah. good thing. Uh, I just, when, when I heard Steve Coogan talking, it just took me back. Because I remember, like, again, March of the Wooden Soldier was like my, my tradition with my dad. Every Christmas we'd watch that movie. And he sounds just like him. And it's, it's called great. Stan and Ollie, Stan the movie? Stan and Ollie. That's a. Nobody knows that's a Laurel and Hardy movie. I know. I, know. I think they were trying to get away from Lynch. Like they should have just called it Laurel and Hardy. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> That, that that would have been a little too on the nose. I don't know how you market this movie. What but do you mean? It's called. It's. I mean, it's about Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. But. I'm doing a doc called Daryl and John, um, <laughs> and people are like you should just call it Hall and Oates. I'm like, no, we, this is for the fans, man. Makuga will be there on the opening night. They'll know. That yeah. was your best. That was your best joke since oh. you walked in the room. Oh right wow! I, no, I really like that one. This is Ooh. Roxy coming in yeah. hot. No, I, really, I thought it was a really good one. Wow. I, I, I like to. I like to let you simmer. It's not that I'm not and being nice facetious. I like that whistle one. now. Yeah. I finally got you to whistle. Well, I felt that because I hadn't laughed out loud, and it wasn't like quite the laugh out loud situation. But I wanted you to know it worked for Thank me. You. You're welcome. Appreciate well, that. good. All right, this we're is gonna be a this. fun break. We're gonna get we're gonna get a break, and yeah. when we get back from the break, we're gonna talk to Steve. Steve's got a lot going on. Um, he's directing first feature film. Yeah, first feature film, and we're gonna hear all about it after the break. Make sure follow Steve on Twitter. Get us Steve going. Burn Live. Yep, and hashtag us Collider Live. Get the conversation going. And Riley's gonna read out some of those comments after the break. Hello, Collider fans. I'm Christian Harloff, and you see my stupid name in the background because that's my other show. It's one on one with me. Christian Harloff, what the hell is it? I just sit down and talk to people. I literally just sit down and talk to people about what the hell's going on in their lives and their careers. And it's a long form interview show. Uh, originally, it aired on Collider Video as far as the YouTube channel goes, but we moved it on over and it's on the Collider Video Podcast, Collider Podcast, excuse me, on YouTube. 
Go on over there if you want to see the video and see the pretty faces that I'm talking to. I've had some great guests over the past, um, and we're going to have a lot more. And there's going to be people that you, maybe some celebrities or actors and actresses, producers, writers, all that stuff. But there's also a lot of the people that you know around here. I could have Copster on there. I could have Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Mark Riley, Roxy Stryer, whoever. And I'm going to find out more about them long form. And also go to Apple Podcasts and check out the one-on-one -on -one feed with Christian Harloff. And not only is my show on there, Mark Riley, the Riley Roundtable, which is another sit-down, long-form interview show, that's also there. And when Steve Frosty Weintraub talks to Kevin Smith or George Takei, that's going to be on that podcast feed also. So if you're taking a long drive and you like those long-form interviews, pop on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff, give it a rate, comment, do all that because it helps the show and it makes podcast one go, hey, you know what? Those people should get ad money. Oh, hi guys, it's Perry here, and I am gonna tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening right now. Uh, we started it a few couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. We've had some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show with, that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me and Jay Williams as well. For You might know him from uh, the After Schmo show. What is, what is that thing called? Afterthoughts. Afterthoughts, that's it. The Afterthoughts show. All those things are happening here at Collider. And look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen. We want you to watch. If you're a sports fan, even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now that's as far out as we'll go uh, or cricket but uh, maybe in the future if we go collider worldwide that's certainly a possibility but for right now collider sports is there for you take a look at it take a watch and let us know what you think hey guys riley here and let me tell you about the riley roundtable that's right they gave riley his own podcast the riley roundtable is on its new home and that is one-on-one -on -one with christian harloff on the itunes feed for podcast one it drops every thursday the riley roundtable is a little bit about everything it's about movies and life life and movies and everything in between i like to have non special guests for discussions like justice league versus batman v superman for discussions about wine tasting for discussions about ufos and everything in between. That's right. The Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, we are back. It is, what the hell is it? It's still Wednesday. And still it's Collider day. Live. It's Mark Ellis. Josh McCuga has joined us. Roxy Stryan, our very special guest here, comedian Steve Byrne, comedian director Steve Byrne. Uh, and before we get into your stuff during the break, Steve had mentioned something you guys were talking about on the yeah, plane. Yes, Steve had asked me, he's like, hey, Mark, aren't you going to be in New York coming up? And oh. I said, yes, Steve, I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, October 5th at New York Comedy Club. Yep. going to be performing. It's during New York Comic Con. So yeah. thank you for asking me, Steve. Yeah, totally. A, yeah, totally. It's all, it's all um, about we, were we were just talking about your website. Um, <laughs> so what... <laughs> Are those hobbies real, like listed on your website? I do not, in fact, play the drums yeah. that well. Okay, yeah. it's all about you, isn't it? Um, no, we actually we we were talking about Solo during the break because he said that you guys talked about it a lot. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Star Wars and Solo, and I was my buddy who wrote me this morning. Here's my problem with Solo. Okay, uh, because and it's this not, is what the buddy said, or this is what this you is what I'm saying okay. uh, to the buddy, and the buddy had the same problem. 
Put some pants on the Wookiee, am I right? You're right. The thing with the thing with him, it's not that it's not Harrison Ford. I'm cool with that. Right. It's not Han Solo. Like that character, it's a good kind of standalone film. But when you really look into who that character is, and I don't want to hear the big arguments. Well, that's who he turns into eventually. No, it's it's not. It's not that guy five years beforehand is not the guy at the Mos Eisley Cantina with his feet up. It's just not the same guy. And it's fun. I didn't think that the kid did a bad job acting. I actually thought he did a great job. I just thought it was a completely different character. It felt like a different movie. It felt like it, it felt like a Star Wars movie. It just right. felt like it felt like a standalone kind of like comic book. That was out there. I thought I thought it was an unnecessary film, um, and it just uh, it just didn't. It felt more like Star Wars, and I said this, and he gets mad every time I say it. But it felt more like Star Wars than the Last Jedi did. Um, <laughs> but ah! yeah, that's you became one of ah! you became one of my Twitter followers. Um, but. But that's uh, that was my take. But you want you liked it. You want to see a sequel. I loved it. You did. I loved it. Like I go in reverse. Everybody loves you. Either like Last Jedi and then Force Awakens, and then Rogue One. And so like I flip it. Yeah. I loved Rogue One first. I loved Solo second. Then Force Awakens. Then Last Jedi. Last Jedi. Just yeah. two guys from Pittsburgh agreeing on movies. Yeah. <laughs> just four yeah. one two. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Do you know he's from Pittsburgh? Or you yeah. just make it up. Oh. No. Yeah. It's, I mean, and a yeah. lot of, there are some people who really enjoyed that movie. It's just it. You know, it ate. It, it ate shit in Star Wars standards, well, but money wise. Like, as, but as soon as we got into, as soon as we all kind of united in uh, France, we were hanging out in the Air France lounge before we How took long off to Jordan. Uh, five hours. Speaking uh, of France, Mark's going to be at the New York Comedy Club. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't two, know. right? Is that <laughs> we, we point that out? Yeah. That's, uh, Los Angeles, October twenty sixth. Yeah. Hi, France. Yeah. Uh, within two minutes of us all hanging out in the lounge together, we're debating the new Star Wars movie. Is it just two, just two of you guys? Or Me, not? him, Steve Simone was there. Oh, uh, Simone Bill was Crawford, there? Pittsburgh legend was there. Oh, that's cool. So when we're all just and because we all have different opinions yeah, on the yeah. new movie, so we're all just kind of changing it. And then we we end up going to Jordan, and we're still it's just kind of like a running through yeah. line. Who's during... the biggest advocate for the movie? Was it Steve for Solo? For Solo, yeah. Yeah. And what yeah. about Simone thing? Uh, Sim <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, Simone, uh, Simone likes. I think he goes Force Awakens, mm. and then he starts to get a little soured on and the fact bored. that. Well, he, I, I think Simone is is disappointed that he's not the age where Star Wars would grab him anymore. Okay, and you he's know? mad about that. Yeah, yeah. Same way wrestling doesn't catch him the same way it used to. Right, <laughs> now, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Crawford was funny because he 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 has two uh, he has two daughters and and he took him to see Rogue One yeah. because. He's just he's a Star Wars fan. Right. He's like, oh, Star Wars, it's great for the kids. And he said his daughters were crushed by the acting of Rogue <laughs> really? One. See, my daughter Everybody probably loved it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's, I don't like, like, I'm, daddy. I'm, she, yeah. she was like, are they all dead? And then he didn't know what to tell her. He's like, I, probably. Yeah. Right. Well, it is on it is on Blu-ray now. Just it, it, or coming out, I think Tuesday or whatever. Too. Our so. friend uh, Ash Cross is on the. Uh, she is got she? a quote on the oh, back cool. of the uh, the Blu-ray. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna try it again. I told them yesterday. Sadie bailed on it pretty quick, so I'm gonna try to get her to. to watch it but um we'll see I've seen is it. it one of those films that if it's on video or streaming or whatever that it could catch fire and people people that didn't go see it in the theaters see it and then there could you think the demand is just it's never gonna happen no i do think that more people will give it a shot on the people some of the people who didn't see it in the theater will probably check it out on blu-ray mm -hmm. for but sure I think he's I know. talking in terms of, of of getting a sequel greenlit no i think they're done it's with done. them no, yeah i think that they, because because the problem with them is that the you could the, do it <laughs> yeah. You want to direct? You direct solo. Get like a fan solo sourced too. solo. They just did a fan sourced yeah. Last Jedi for some I, right. stupid reason. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's an amazing we'll move on movie, here too. Since I've been alive. <laughs> what is it? The Last Jedi. You love it. It's my favorite since I've been alive. Okay. Oh, someone's going nuts. <laughs> Thank in you. Uh, just Thank in case you. I didn't piss the fucking chat off enough today. Yeah. Well, there, there you go. go. Suck my dick. What are you doing over Jesus there? Jesus oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where is this, this rabbit hole? You're in a mood. Yeah. You're on the five this morning? What, yeah. Like, where's this yeah. coming from? Yeah. No. I almost got physically attacked yeah. for the second day in a row of not liking yeah. Mama Mia 2, still Mama Mia. I know. Well, because he came what at me. Fuck? It's like nine in the morning, and he's like, I hate all musicals, which is a dong take, which we all know. Dong you take. Just hate all musicals. Dong like, what the fuck's wrong what? with you? And do you, and you love yeah. music. You love movies. Well, you hate all fucking musicals. Let me ask Cyber Makuga. Makuga, yeah. uh, what, uh, Cyber Makuga, what, what, kind, what kind of take was that? Do you know what kind of take that was? No, oh, he said sorry. You can hear him scruffling in the background. He's like sorry. He's like just he's, he's like scratching his pants. And then he, oh, now we got a phone call. Perfect. <laughs> Is that a real phone call? I think he's calling. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Uh, yeah. Hey. It's Brett. I just I just decided to get home and uh, beat the traffic here. Um, let me know next time I'm on uh, the actual show. 
Oh, you got, you're gonna be a, you stop it. You're going to be on a little bit because we have we have something to do with you. You're going to interview people too. But get off the phone because I don't want to interview you anymore. I want to interview our guest. Um, <laughs> I do Steve. like him actually. Who, Brett? No. Steve. I like Brett too. Again, I would Steve. I would like to see Roxy and Steve as like a couple where they have a nice dinner party and yeah. Steve's very classy. Hey, thank you for coming. And right. then Roxy gets drunk halfway through. Yeah. Suck my dick. Roxy. You don't like the fucking meatballs? <laughs> it's a dog dinner. Right. <laughs> Good God. All right, everybody's uh, here. I eat people. Lock the doors. <laughs> true. Uh, I haven't had enough today. Hey, Ro- other people. Uh, I'm a let me ask. Angry. Let me ask everybody else in the room except Steve. Can I interview Steve now? Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. I guess. Steve, yeah, Burns. Steve, where else am I going to be coming up? Yeah, where's Mark going to be? Where, <laughs> this Sunday, the, the, the Yoo Hoo Room. Yeah, I think. <laughs> what's, what's Mark's best joke? <laughs> best. <laughs> I can tell you it's worse. You guys know each other's jokes. Yeah, yeah. You know how many times you have to watch each other? Wow. Yeah. Steve makes me watch uh, every every, every special he has. It's a requirement. And send it's a requirement back for notes. opening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, a lot of redlining. Okay. <laughs> I and said, I, don't punch these up. I want to talk about this movie you're directing. Okay. Because um, I didn't know until, because he, you and I ran into each other, talked about you having coming in. I had no idea that you were directing, uh, had aspirations of being a director. Yeah. Tell me about this. Where did where, you decide? Because it's a scary thing to go, hey, I'm going to, because you're busy as shit doing comedy all the time. When you have the, the time to write a movie, or direct a movie, you yeah. put it, it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I just finished my hour special. And I was on the road, and I I had sat in the in the writers' room on Sullivan and Son for three years. So I I really enjoy that. I think uh, getting to see the writing process, and I started getting more involved in reading about uh, just scripts. And so so while I was on the road, I was like, well, I'm bored. I just finished this thing. I'll just write a screenplay to just see if I can do it. Yeah. And so I bought Save the Cat and Joseph Campbell and all these other books, and uh, I knew the foundation, the structure, and I just thought. If I'm going to write anything, you know, you write about what you know. And I haven't seen a great stand-up film. Stand-up, uh, you know, all, all the films that have stand-up, stand-up's taken a backseat. Punchline. and I mean, you could, it, yeah. it was front seat, but it was like a drama more than anything else, right? Is yeah, that... Punchline was good, but it, there was no, you know, the, there's no lockers in stand-up. There's, you know, right. the, the, it was just funny so people. many things. Funny people. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm with you. Yeah. There, there's so many, like even like the big sick, like stand up was was not a part. It, it, it was the, the main story, thing, right? Right. If if that, so I just thought nobody's done an actual film about stand up that's great. So I thought, why not do it? Fish out of water. An MC, a, a kid that moonlights as a stand up gets gets. You know, he's got the corporate job, but essentially the film is every comic has had that moment where it's like, do I pursue my bliss or do I take the safe route? Right. right? So put the put the character in that in that time frame or in that frame and then essentially he gets offered his first MC slot at an A club which is the improv okay. and he gets to hit the road for the first time and I thought no matter what part of the where you are in your career as a stand up you're going to be on the road and the road is such a fascinating aspect of stand up to me and so many people don't know what it's really like so right. I thought put this kid on the road so the whole first half of the film is the, the romanticism and optimism and excitement and partying of hanging out with the feature act and then the back half of the film is all the isolation sobriety realism and uh camaraderie and okay. solitude yeah well and solitude of hanging out with a road weary headliner somebody who's just been over it so you get all three echelons of a career in stand-up. You're either an MC, a feature, or a headliner, right. and it's all encapsulated within a few days that weekend. And I think that I've never seen a film done that way to capture stand-up that way, and I'm just super excited for this. And we can I, say the name of it, right? It's, it's, yeah, called, it's called, called Opening, opening Act, Act, the Mark yeah. Ellis story. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy O. Yang's yep. the MC. Alex Moffer from SNL is the feature. Cedric the Entertainer is the headliner. Then you got Bill Burr as his boss. Are they boss. starring themselves, or are they characters? No, they're all characters, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Bill Burr's his boss. Roy Wood Jr. is his cubicle mate. You got Whitney Cummings, Angela Johnson, mm-hmm. Kathleen Madigan, Porter's Ken Jeong, right? Chris Porter, yeah. uh, Tom Segura, Russell Peters. Wow. It, it just goes on and on and on. So many great comics. Yeah, Mark's well, not in it. And Mark's not in it. <laughs> so, well, the what was his audition like? Was it any good? Right. Well, did, did you audition for the movie? <laughs> no, I did not audition for the movie. <laughs> he never got the call. I was, I was not called audition for the did movie. Did anybody audition for the movie, or did you? Are these your friends, or how Jeez. did it work? I don't think we even had auditions, to be honest. Yeah, we had some auditions, yeah. But for for the most part, it was like, you, you know, know what they thinking who would be great yeah. for this and right. then making a phone so call. So Jimmy O. Yang didn't even didn't audition? How, no. Did you, you knew him? 
from beforehand? Uh, yeah, yeah. Knew him beforehand. Okay. Once he was cast, that's when I regretted it. But it was like, <laughs> fuck it, it's too late. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny you say that because, you know, as far as television goes, I think that, I do think that, um, what's the Santino show? The, uh, the Dying, Dying Up Hero. The Dying Up Hero, which yeah. I watched. I feel that is pretty, for a lot of it, from what I was watching television-wise, yeah. um, hits it in a way. I know it's very different from the book, but it, when watching that show is very therapeutic for me. It reminded me of my days at the store yeah. very much so. But I think you're 100% right when it comes to film. Haven't seen it done the right way. I've been wanting to see something done the right way. Yeah. How do you get this thing made now? Because it's not that easy to, 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 get, a, to get a movie made. You can write it and True. say, I want to direct it, but how do you get it made? Um, I wrote it. I gave you know Vince Vaughn and I have been friends for a very long time, so I said, hey, would you take a look at this. I just wrote this, uh, you know, just as an exercise. Right. He's he, a big comedy fan. Huge comedy yeah. fan. Read it. He's like, you got something here. Let's work on this. So I spent essentially a year and a half on the road. I get notes from them. I go on to Cincinnati, come home, go over it again. Okay, here's the next scene. Think about this. So it was when just, you say them, you just mean him? Uh, Peter Billingsley and Vince Vaughn. Right, they're producing producing partners. Partners. So the Wild West uh, Picture Show production. So, so basically for a year and a half, I just did that. And we grinded it, got it in shape. And then Vince had done Brawl in Cell Block 99. Right. Um, I'd seen Bone Tomahawk. And the the guys that financed that and dragged across concrete with him and Mel that just they just filmed that um, the financiers had read this script Vince passed along and they were like this is great let's do it yeah. so it kind of happened really quickly once Vince gave and, he, to these and when guys. he's passionate about it that's going to help so yeah well, do you get so a question about that too because I know you guys have been buddies for a bit but I I mean. We all have friends in this business. If you're doing it long enough, that you, if you, someone at that level, right, right, that you you get hesitant at a second to go. I don't want to give them something. This is like one shot I got, but I'm for like, sure. Yeah, and like, do you you got to be that confident and say this? I really believe in this thing, and I know he loves comedy. That's why I give it to him. Or do you or do you ever say maybe I don't give him this one? Um, no, I gave him this one because I felt pretty confident right. about. It. I felt I I got the world right. I knew the world, and I know he he's he's very fascinated with the world of stand up. He's always asking me about stand ups and you know what's this guy up to? Do you like this person? It, it, so he's very immersed in the world of comedy. So I, again, I gave it to him just as an exercise, not even thinking maybe this will get just like hey, can you tell me if I'm on something see. here? And then it just spiraled out of control. Okay, you didn't have an intention of saying, "Hey, come on and produce this thing." It was more or less like, "Give me your, give me your feedback on." it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, cool. Really, yeah. But wow. at what point script? does? Uh, you wrote? Yeah, I wrote a wow. second. I, I wrote one before that that okay. was like a more of a broad comedy, but I knew it was kind of. Uh, at yeah. what point do you do you go from writing this and having Vince take a look and being like, "Yeah, I want to work with you on this," to you being the director of the film? Yeah, well, did you have intention of directing it right away? You know, when I when I wrote it, I was like, well, I'm too – if this ever came to fruition and as it started coming along, if it's like, what do you want to do with this? Do you want to be in it? I'm like, I'm too young to be the headliner and I'm too old to be the MC in the feature. So I, there's not really any role in this for me. Uh, he's like, well, why don't you direct it? I'm like, well, wow. I never directed anything. He's like, well, you also haven't <laughs> wrote a screenplay before either. <laughs> right. So you can do this. Nobody knows the story better than you. Just go for it. So yeah. then I'm taking master classes and I'm reading and, uh, you know, all these different books Are you and friends everything. friends with and Mike Young? Friendly. I know Mike Young. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Because uh, you know Mike. Mike, Mike yeah, because yeah. Mike did the same thing. We've had Mike on a couple of times too. Mm -hmm. Mike's directed a few things now too. So I was curious if you ever reached out to Mike and talked to him. Also, if you guys were, because Mike's directed like two or three features now, right? He's also got a mm -hmm. rap album. So let's not take him too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> You've heard it. <laughs> I have heard it. Yeah. You've heard it. <laughs> okay. No, I, I do love Mike. But yeah, but yeah I, I think nobody, no matter what, I talked to Neil Brenner, I talked to Whitney Cummings, yeah. Whitney directed, Neil's directed. Nothing can prepare you for it. True. It, it just, it's fucking mind blowing how much work it is. So I think as much, and I, uh, you know, everybody can critique or have an opinion on a film. It's fucking hard to make a yeah. movie. It what kind really of director is. did you find yourself to be? Did you, because you, were you, did you ever yell at anybody? No. Did you ever, I mean, it was pretty, everybody kind of working together with you? With your buddies too, so you're not For it. sure, yeah. I think it was an, I, I think, look, if it was a different subject matter, maybe you could get into an issue there, but, but because all the comics knew the world so well, and you're, you're doing a radio scene with Russell Peters, it's like, You've done morning radio. You know how to do this. Right. Eliza and Brooks, we own, you know, did it. So it was, it was, it was pretty easy. Yeah. So you, you already finished walk? production. You, where are you in the process? Uh, right we're now? editing now. So I just saw my cut yesterday. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go back and 
get through it. Uh, Vince and I watched it yesterday. Oh, so. cool. So when you so again the guess, burn so, cut. That's yeah, like the, the burn right, cut. The burn that's cut. a Blu-ray where people are like, cut. I mean, the movie was good in theaters, but I need more extras. <laughs> I need more bonus features. Well, I guess that's another director question. Is that so? Do you find yourself? Is there a lot of changes you want to make? Are you your 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 worst critic? Like how, when you're watching this, do you love it? Like how how are you feeling about it? I do love it because I knew the script was. I knew we had a great script because the table reads always did well. The scary thing for me was visually, is this going to translate? Yeah. There, there are things in the film that people are going to, there's no way. It's like everything in the film happened to me when I was on the road. Oh, wow. So it's all true. Like it all happened. Um, but visually, is it going to translate as well as just reading it? And that to me was like, you know, when we're watching the first pass, I'm like, God, I hope this scene works. This, there's this trailer park scene that it's so fucking funny. And, uh, and when we watched the first cut, it was there already. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God, okay, good. This is going to be good. Because it is an indie film. It's not a broad film. It, it's more in the lines of like a maid or swingers or a Juno, somebody That's pursuing cool. their bliss. And it's very grounded. But the the pieces that are comedic truly are there. I that was going to be my question. was like, do you want people to walk away from this? Because you want a lot of like, a lot of, a lot, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when people do, like, I'm dying up here. I don't laugh a lot during that show, if at mm -hmm. all, because it's more of a drama, and a lot of times when they do stand-up comics, it's more about, like, well, the, like the doldrums. Would you rather have people walk away from this feeling good about themselves, feeling... For sure, okay. for sure. And there's right. a lot of inside baseball, too, so that comics that are watching it go, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of lingo that's laced in there yeah. that that's strictly there for the comics. That's uh, great. The, but but the the bigger piece are all there, and, and I think pursuing your bliss is a universal theme, and when we were watching the cut... Yesterday, and Vince was very optimistic. I was like, okay, I think we're we're on a good track here. Yeah. There's a lot to do. So, well, you said that you know, obviously, it's a lot of work, and you got you, you threw yourself into directing. But do you? Is it something you want to do again? I I would definitely like to take some time. I don't fancy myself a director right. by any means, but but I, I think after having done it, it's like I would do that again. I, I like the camaraderie, and Mark knows this. When you're a comic, you're just packing your bag, and you know, I mean, you're constantly by yourself, yeah. especially when you're working nonstop. But to be part of a team. And to, and all these creative types, all the production designer, costume, everybody. It was it was a joy to work with everybody. It was great. great. What's like the hardest thing about directing that you had no idea you even had to do that as a director? Because like when we're watching an NFL game, we see a coach say action. I didn't just, know that. Like <laughs> you say action. You see it in the movies all the time, and and then they're like, all right, we're ready to go, and I, and you're sitting there, and they're like, you got to say. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, yeah, action. <laughs> and then the the comics like Jimmy and Alex Moffat, the first scene, the first day, they're just improving at the end, and yeah. they're. they're they're, they're, they kept talking, and the assistant director Hardy comes over. He goes, "They're gonna keep talking until you say cut." I was like, "Oh shit, yeah, and uh, cut, yeah." Right, right. So uh, like those things, but but making your day is something I didn't anticipate. We were we were doing twelve pages a day, which is crazy yeah. to do twelve pages a, a day. Ton of uh, yeah, we we went twelve hours a day, 10, 12 hours a day. You know, all the unions have their, but to to look at the clock constantly and go, I hope we get the scene. And then getting all the coverage in there, that to me was just the thing I didn't anticipate yeah. uh, via all the things I've seen, master classes, everything. It was like making your day was the scariest thing because it's, it's money. Yeah. Well, what else was going to ask you? Can you say can you say what the budget was on the film? Uh, 2.4. 2.4. Yeah. So, I mean, again, so that, and that's something that... Is that Jordanian currency? Or is that, <laughs> that's, that's American? <laughs> well, Our really dollars, uh, Jordanian dollars is pretty healthy right now. All right, listen, so you're doing the cut now. It's and David Buster's tokens. <laughs> David Buster's. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. a currency right yeah. there. <laughs> it's Bitcoin. So when do you guys, when, when are we looking to get it out in, the, in theaters? Uh, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say. Uh, okay. We're trying to get it done by perhaps South by Southwest and okay. seeing what we're going to do there. Uh, as for where it's going to live, I, I, w that's all still up for debate. Um, but I would love for it to see a theatrical release. That would be my goal. Well, that's great. Say. So the, the film is the opening act. It's from our buddy, comedian Steve Burns. He's also, also got a documentary, yeah. And you got there a documentary as well, too. Thank you for that is going to be in the theater transition. this weekend. Yeah. So. <laughs> You've got a Here's documentary a carrot, coming donkey. out Keep also walking. <laughs> coming out this weekend. Can oh you give God. us a little bit about that before? We're premiering uh, at the New York Comedy Club. Mark Ellis is uh, <laughs> going to be there. Uh, okay, yeah. No, we're, Frank's dressed as a pirate. <laughs> it was, and what's the document? The doc is called Always Amazing. It's about the amazing Jonathan. It's going to be premiering oh, cool. this Saturday, 2 p.m. at the Raleigh Studios for the L.A. Liftoff Film Festival. So we're going to be there. And um, it's an hour and a half film. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with The Amazing Jonathan. Yeah. Great comic magician. He was one of the first comics to have like a, a relevant, prominent half hour on Comedy Central yeah. when they first started doing them. 
And he was touring. He was a national headliner. Um, and he was a headliner in Vegas for many years. And I got to know him for many years after opening for him when I was a feature act. And then Jonathan got diagnosed with cardiomyopathy, which essentially half his heart is operating. And you combine that with diabetes and a lifetime of drug addiction, it's not a good scenario. Right. So doctors gave him a year to live four years ago. And he's been sitting around waiting to die. And he retired from comedy. He retired in Vegas. And then he said, I'm going to get back on stage and see if I still got it. So he announced these three shows in Boston and the East Coast. And I said, somebody should document this. Yeah. And I thought, well, fuck, I'll just document it. And I just written the screenplay. So I knew story, narrative, and so everything. You're directing two things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so really this makes is before, me sick, right? like, this is before uh, the film was even in motion, though. Yeah. I just finished it. I was still working on it. Um, so I just grabbed some cameras. I got my buddy Jason Dallas. And we went out and did some interviews with Jonathan Copperfield, Penn Jillette, And we started getting these interviews. And really, the, Jonathan's the face of the film. The heart of the film, the real story is that when Jonathan was touring, he went to Australia. It was a big market for him. And every time he came here, every year he was back, this 12-year-old kid, this 13-year-old, this 14-year-old kid was backstage waiting to get his autograph and was fascinated with him. And Jonathan kind of took him under his wing, and they started keeping in touch, and this kid and his parents would come to the shows, and Jonathan would take care of him, teach him tricks. And then he started hiring him to be his tour manager when he came to Australia. And then he ended up hiring to be oh, his wow. tour manager when he was here in the States after Joel graduated, Joel Osborne, uh, graduated high school. So throughout the course of the film, it's really like a Rick and Morty relationship. It's two people that should not be friends, <laughs> on paper, completely different. But Jonathan and Joel, it became a really fraternal relationship via overcoming the drug addiction, suicide attempt, all the things we did. And that's the like film. the main through, through line of the story is the relationship between, between these two. Between these two guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they just, they Joel meditates and Jonathan's doing drugs and Jonathan has him negotiating a multi-million dollar deal with the Golden Nugget and the kid's 18. Wow. And Jonathan's like, you gotta go in there and say, this is what Jonathan wants, go fuck yourself and then slam the door and walk out. And Joel's like, uh, no, that's not how it's done, right? I, I don't know much, but you don't do it like that. It's, it's an amazing thing to watch, too, because, because I, 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 I got a chance oh, to see it. it and uh, I, Steve was asleep on the plane and I hit yeah, the play. Just, yeah. I was watching, I was listening to Mark's newest album. <laughs> and, uh, still we, at the castle? We, uh, still we, at the castle. Try, every album I release has some sort of castle, castle. reference. Castle door's locked. Still guard the castle. Right. Um, Get out the moat. And when you when you see, it's a moat, Josh. I said a moat. Oh, I thought you said moot. No, no, I said moot. Pittsburgh accent creeping yeah, in there. My bad. Speaking so of moot points, here you go. That, he might not be able to karaoke, but he can say moat. <laughs> he can't, he can't <laughs> say moat. Uh, you see that through, and like, like I think comedians are really good documentary, the Jerry Seinfeld thing. What? But the thing that's not in that, that's in this, is that Jerry and Orny, there's like one scene of them kind of hanging out, like ships passing in the night. Jerry tells them a story, and then they're off in their separate ways. Right. And you never really see if there is a mentorship or not with, with Jonathan and Joel. You see it, and you see how much they care about each other. And it really resonated with me and Will with you, too, because you and I have been doing schmoes for so long that there's there's kids that started watching us in high school. Yeah. And now you get emails from them, and they just graduated college, and they're working in film, and they're doing things that you and I can't do. And it's, it's incredible to see the matriculation of somebody from a fan to... A um, as some sort of professional capacity to finding their own calling in life because of this mentorship they got. Yeah. So it, it really, I, I, I don't like a lot of Steve Burns comedy. Right. Doesn't uh, <laughs> not for me, right. but <laughs> the uh, the documentary is unbelievable to watch, and I was really impressed uh, with my buddy. That's great. Well, thank you. Yeah, Joel ends up opening for him. Uh, oh, all these shows, okay. so everything kind of comes full circle. Yeah. How do you nice. tell this all in a documentary that you started filming at the last part of? It's all via story. They're just uh, recalling it, or your. We we called a lot of archival footage. Uh, cool. That that was the toughest part. You know, Mark and I were talking about the film, and he's you know just asking as a friend. You know what? And and one of the most difficult things was calling all that archival stuff. Pics of him from San Francisco as a street magician and he did a TV show with Murph Griffin that we right. found footage of and you gotta call all that and document it all. Right. It was, it, that that was a lot more so work than I anticipated. That's crazy. So you would wind up directing two things. You got, now you got a feature film and yeah. you got a documentary. That's, that's And I'm here. And you're here. <laughs> you blew it. <laughs> you, totally, no, yeah. you totally blew it. You're 100% accurate. And you blew you, it. You just blew you, 17 hours. You just ruined your whole career within a second. For Jordan with, with you. But yeah. it was, it, that, that was a blast. But, but like, look, it, 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 it like... I think everybody has a story to tell, yeah. and I think these days with the fact you can make a movie on your laptop, it's like why not just get out there and try to see if you can sure. do it because it's easy to sit there and 
you know, your you your profession is to dissect and disseminate and break down the fun of films and these films that are so fun. Our for us, job but... is to take the fun out of movies. <laughs> right, right, right. I like to. Yeah. Think. How are we doing I think so to anybody far? listening, it's like. <laughs> If you're if you're that passionate about film, it, 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 there's no better time than to try to do a film than right now. Right. It, they're affordable cameras. You could do it on your iPhone. I, why not try to take a stab? Yeah. And if there's some subject matter, make a document. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm, I'm really I'm I just, telling you. you and you gave me the DVD yeah. last night, and the way you were kind of describing the amazing, did amazing you watch Jonathan, it? I did. Okay. I watched. Uh, Won't you be or will you be my neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. The great. Mr. Rogers Can I documentary. Right now? Sure. Thank you. About the yeah. former Air I mean, Force sniper, Fred Rogers. <laughs> yeah, Air Force yeah. sniper. Because uh, a lot of that movie was. Down my DVD? <laughs> oh, yeah, my bad. I'll get back to you so <laughs> she can lose <laughs> it. Right. Um, there was a lot of archival footage in that. Yeah. Uh, the interviews were very short but very poignant. Uh, but I thought I got the most from the archival footage. Uh, I mean, if you aren't emotionally moved by the end of that documentary, there's Soulless. something wrong with you. Yeah. Something, yeah. And but monotone and joyless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> correct. Um, but I think it, with the amazing Jonathan and any kind of story of that nature is if you yeah. move even thirty percent of the audience to to tears or to like motivation to do something else, you've done your job. Well, what's going to be yeah, fun about this about this documentary is that once people, if they if they get to see a trailer, they get to see clips, like if you Google, you may not, the name The Amazing Jonathan may not be like, oh, I know that guy. As soon as you watch him, oh, you're, you're like, oh, I've seen this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, for TV. sure, yeah. for sure. So, um, see, and this and this is this weekend that we can see this. This weekend, Saturday, the 22nd, uh, 2 p.m. Look when you talk about him. <laughs> yes, sorry, I was staring at your Doc Martens. Um, <laughs> One Next time you get a hot topic, take me. So I was, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's Saturday the twenty second at two p.m. Okay. LA Lift Off Film Festival, and and Jonathan and I'll be there to do a Q and A afterwards. So, I look, Jonathan doesn't have much time left. Yeah. Uh, this is something that means a lot to him. So if you are a Jonathan fan, if you're a comedy fan, if you remember seeing him, come out and support him because I know it's going to mean a lot to him. Will we, we be able to see it after the film festival? Will, you be, will it be online anywhere? Will we be able to... Uh, we're figuring all that out right okay, now, yeah, as we speak. Okay. So, I can yeah. send out the password to everybody. Yeah, please, let's yeah, do that. You could just <laughs> do that, yeah. Would you well, say he's your I like friend to be worthless. Yeah. Are you guys close now? I've been friends with Jonathan for a while. I, Joel Osborne, the uh, other subject matter of the, of the film, he and I have been great friends for a long time. He's, he's great. He's somebody I respect. He's a great comic. He's a great friend. And it's something it's like a relationship cool. I tried to have with Mark early on, but it just yeah. it didn't yeah, work out. Yeah, I was going to so. say, between in Jonathan, in Joel, and Mark Ellis, who would you say best <laughs> friends? Maybe I have some sort of emotional connection with you that Jonathan and Joel just can't foster. Yeah, I, I probably, I'm, of all the comics, at the, anybody, of everybody at the comic store, I probably get along, like all the comics, then there's Jeff Scott. And then there's like wait staff, <laughs> a parking attendant, and then like Ellis, whatever. <laughs> He's not in either of your movies, so no, really yeah. you don't there's like no, him that much. You're all. saying he hasn't seen my Carfax commercials. I keep <laughs> sending them. Yeah. So when I was parking, I bring Steve's that up car. to you once every three months. <laughs> I, mean, I was Mark, just tell me the Carfax. Uh, Steve, <laughs> it, it, it was. <laughs> It was an absolute pleasure to have you in. Man. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, I really man, appreciate man. it. There's the Carfax commercial right there. <laughs> oh, <it's> so <laughs> good. Uh, so, look at him. Look at him. Yeah. Topher Grace at his best. Uh, I really thought you were in uh, uh, Force Awakens. I thought that was you. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Yeah. Bollet I got a text from him. Yeah, I got a text from a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and again, it's, it's, it's at Steve Byrne Live. Or Steve Byrne Live. That's Steve Byrne Live. At Steve Byrne Live. Check him out. Again, two big projects here. Now we where Mark got his inspiration. Mark Ellis Live, Steve Byrne Live. You took it from him. I did not take it from him. I probably took it from Steve. Carlos Mencia, motherfucker. Yeah. All right. Steve, thank you for joining us today. Please come back and visit us. Thanks for having me. Great job. I love watching you guys. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. It was lovely. It was truly lovely. And thank you for all that you did for our troops overseas. Steve Byrne, everybody. It was his 10th USO tour. It was his 10th USO tour. I was so glad to have you along, too, by the way. Nobody better honestly I know I yeah. give you a lot of, I love Mark Ellis yeah. he's just a great vibe yeah. and you need somebody with a great vibe on those tours because before I went with Brian Callen and Dove David off of San oh. Tripoli and it was not a great vibe oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they hate everything yeah. but the like, stories that he got from that and yeah. he told me made my trip those so guys thought it acted like the USO tour is a spring break I'm like guys you're not here to get laid you're trying to say thank you to the service men right. and women. Well, he just wanted to get bit by dogs. Some people say no. thank you in different ways. Burn you know? <laughs> yeah. knows if he takes Mark not Ellis and Steve Simone, we're not going to run around trying to get laid. That's true. We're you just guys want to get around. pizzas, buddies? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good Simone. That's a good Simone. Uh, all right, you know what? Let's, we'll, go to a, we'll go to a quick break, guys. Right. And when we get back, we're going to have Brett Sheridan. Brett Sheridan is going to do a couple things. He's going to interview Frank, the editor, and then I'm going to send him into Heroes. They don't know. <laughs> 
They don't know that we're going to send oh, Brett in. Oh, no. That should go well. We're oh, s- no. They're, they're taping. We're just going to send Brett right onto the they're set. They're live on the air. They're, they're live on the well, Not live, but they're live to tape. And I'm going to send Brett right in there okay. and have them Absolutely. just in Who is it? Coy and Amy? It's Coy and Amy. They, they have no idea. They are not going to know what to do I with him. I love it. And I love it so much. That's so evil. after the break, thank you, Steve Burns. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video Podcast Network. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you. Hey everyone, Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good above 50 percent you can watch it monday tuesday wednesday and thursday 4 p.m los angeles time is when we do it it's live so you can participate in the live chat room go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming because it's all the latest movie news of the day who did what at the box office what horrible red box movies bruce willis signed on to the dc the marvel the star wars is the lord of the are they making new i think they're it's a tv show and we still might talk about it anyway because we love movies around here it's myself and an ex expert panel of guests, including John Rocha, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games. We talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Quick break is over. Thank you to Steve Byrne for joining us. I love having Steve in. It was, it's been too long. The best. It's good to have him one back. of one of the best guys I know. He's a good I really dude. liked him. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you can tell. You only give shit to people you like. A hundred percent. Because yeah. otherwise, what's the fucking point? Right. And you like, want to see if, they, if gonna, they can hang. You go back and forth. Yeah. With them. yeah. Why are you going to rip on somebody you don't care about? So you were crazy. like that. You were like that with us when you first started. Always. Started. Yeah. It was always. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's where I'm from. Like, yeah. you can't be from Boston and right. and be nice to people that you like. Were you offended by the way that she was treating Steve Byrne? No, no. I I really enjoyed. Because I mean, I just shot a movie on my iPhone while I was listening. I took the advice. I called my buddy Vince Vaughn, and uh, but if he can do it, yeah. Yeah. Where Any, if, if anybody that knows Vince Khan can make a Hit. movie, Vince uh, Khan. Vince Khan. outside oh, okay. uh, with Steve shooting oh. a promo for his show, oh, I see. Okay. which we should uh, September twenty third, eight p.m. Sunday, Comedy Store, Comedy Store main room. I'm going to be on the bill. Simone, Sarah Tiana, a lot of great comics going to be doing it for Battle Buddies for that foundation. They pair uh, service dogs, who okay. I got to have some fun with this weekend Ooh, with, uh, with with. 
with, with veterans. Oh, that's, so it's okay, a great, great. organization. That's great. That's, yeah, he, McCook is very excited about it. He's put it together, and I think they're shoot, him and Steve are shooting something. Yeah, that's, oh, a, that's that. a great lineup, man. So you got, uh, I made that more by the way. It's cool. Did you really? Yeah, I made it. Sarah Tiana, Pretty Steve cool. Simone. Josh Adam Sons. Myers from yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the goddamn comedy jam. Uh, what yeah. day of the week is the 23rd? Uh, I believe it's uh, a Sunday. Sunday. Hey, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah, I must have yeah. been unavailable on the 23rd. <laughs> you need to start performing again. I might, I might have a spot for Brett. You keep, now, you know what? I might have a spot for Brett. You keep teasing that, Mark. I think October 26th might be a good time for Brett to get back in the water. I mean, I still think there's a, there's something to be said about um, of you, Brett, Roca, Ken, Makuga, myself doing a show. Oh, and so you would you would throw your own hat in that? I ring don't know too. if I would do it. Who's calling me? Stop calling me. Right I want to do it. Um, you would do a stand up. I just don't know if I know how. Uh, maybe you can open up and you could do. It. Maybe, maybe Mark will teach me. Okay, I think well, there you go. I, I I think Roxy would could be a good stand up. But it's, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, I want to. You can't just like casually do it. No, but That's she does. Problem. But Roxy yeah. puts in work for everything that she does. Yeah, though. she does. She puts research into it. That's too. my yeah. problem, though. You don't I, want to overwork, though. Yeah, when I was listening, to you got like the fact that you have to do what you do, which is like you're never here. You're living out of a suitcase. There's ups. There's downs. I'm already doing that right now. Yeah. Like picking that you, no, up no, no, in another you can't, career. You can't, I don't know how no, to do it. You can't do both. And I'll tell you that personally. You just can't do both. The and hardest thing about stand is that you can prep. You, you have to prep a lot and yeah. then you have to let it go. Yeah. And and the letting it go, I think, is hard for people who are used to like being on TV and th- where it's like there's a prompter and it's like just don't yeah. break from the prompter and you're fine. You're going to have to break when from I the prompter. When I had a prompter. job I didn't give a shit about and that I was basically, you know, just I would, I would work there and then I would drive to do stand up. I was single. I didn't have a family. It was the best because I would be going up again two nights. Don't don't say it was the best. Yeah. It was the best. You love your family. Yeah. No, but I meant I'm, the way you phrase that. I'm was so bored. <laughs> what I'm saying is, at the time, it was the best to be able to just go and do it. And it was free, but to do it now, lockdown, you know, lockdown and marriage with kids. Uh, you just, you, it's, it's just you can't do it because it's too, it's overly stressful. You got to pick. How yeah. do you feel about it. your life these yeah, days? Yeah, like Christian? when you're saddled yeah. with yeah, a exactly. family like Christian, but right. you guys you aren't in that Eddie Murphy ivory tower situation. No, no, no. that's the whole point. Is that that's so you still have experiences. Do you have to be funny to be a stand-up? No. Wait, what? What do you, like, mean, you mean in general? I mean, well, yeah, like do you have to thing. be the person who's always making no. people laugh? No, no, no. no. Because that's, I think the best comedians are the comedians who aren't funny, are tr- always trying to be funny off stage. I think the ones that are like, pretty, like, like a, a lot of comedians who are serious, who don't, they save it for the stage. Those to me turn out to be the best comedians. Off comedian. stage, I've made anybody laugh in 11 years. You, no. I find you to be one of the funniest people that I know it's, off stage. So that's the, the thing that like makes me feel like I couldn't do it because yeah. I'm, I am not there's funny. A lot of, there's a lot of comedians out there that you, that I, I used to get it all the, all the time. Be like, "Oh, you're, you you do comedy?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm not fucking putting on a show right so, now. Be yeah. like, and then I used to invite people to work to s- come see the shows of the improv. And they'd be like, oh, "We didn't know you could do that." Yeah. Well, why don't you do that at work? I'm like, "Cause I'd get fired." Yeah. We just had oh, Steve Burn in here. He wasn't funny at all. No, at all. <laughs> he was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> there, but there's like a science to it, <laughs> right? Tell you by you. Of course, it's you, like it's like conductive do- music. Yeah. But we, we'll get into more. I want to have more comedians on the show. I want to have Ren Azizi on. I want to I want to have Samoan yeah. on. Well, because originally I was thinking like do a competition where somebody from the crew yeah. like will win a spot on October 26th. Oh. It, it's hard to deny hard. Brett a spot. Yeah, you got to get Brett. Hey, what time is the show, show, by the way? Who's calling me? 8 p.m. on Friday. 8 p.m. I can do. October 26th. I want to hurry up and do the heroes because they're going to be wrapping up really soon. All right, let's do this quick. All right, so all right, so thank you, Cops. Yeah. All right, go get Good go get my cup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send we're gonna send Brett into Heroes. They're recording. They're Brett. recording the show right now. They, they have no idea. They have no idea he's gonna do it. Can so I go in and watch? You wanna go I watch? I go wanna watch. watch too. No, no, but you're gonna see it on video. Yeah, but I know, like, but I want to watch it uh, live. In person. Go, like, but it, 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 I don't want it to ruin the thing if I open the just door don't, and come just, in. No, no, just don't say anything though, and I'm gonna tell them what to say. And Brett, can yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm Brett, good. Brett, you Brett, you can hear it. No, no, no. We can just hear. Brett, Brett, you can hear me. Yep, I can hear you. All right. So what I want you to do right now, just walk directly in like a man on a mission, like at 100 miles an hour, and just go right to Amy Dowling, and say to her, Amy, I don't mean to offend you, but I need. To, oh, no, don't even say her name. Say, say I don't mean to offend you, but I have to ask this question, and then ask her, who am I? All right. They have no idea this is happening. No, they don't know. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend you, but I just have to ask you, uh, who am I? You're working on a show right now? Say, ask her, uh, ask her about bagels. Oh, uh, uh, no, where can I get some good bagels around here? All right, get out, get out. Get out. Get out. They're running me out. They're running me out. <laughs> 
no, no, Wendy, 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 it's okay, it's okay, no, Wendy. No, uh oh, that didn't go the way I wanted. This, you're an ass. <laughs> that didn't go the way I wanted it to at all. No. I thought they would have went along with it a lot That's better a than that. That's a stunt and a half. I, gonna, I literally said to you, it's not their fault. I thought I, I assume Roka, the producer, that was exciting. I guess was there. I guess that didn't go as well as we hoped it would. Well done, Wait, Christian. So, nice. Yeah, that. it was good. Hey, look, um, the redness. Ch- Ch- in- Ch- that's exactly what I wanted. So <laughs> it, it, it's a, don't well done me. Um, so what? It, I'll well what, done what, whoever I want. Shut your ass. What, Medium rare. Please. What? What happened? Um, Who yelled I, at you? Was it Wendy? Everybody. <laughs> the, the fire, the fire in Wendy. their eyes was burning. Wow. Like, I there was they no have... like, oh, I'm going to go with this. No. No, they wanted nothing no, to do with no, it. No, that was. Can I be honest? At first, the first reaction that came out, I was like, oh, Christian staged this because Not they at all. said, like, oh, what are you doing here? We're doing a show. That was a genuine reaction. I, I would advise like in Wendy the future to make sure that the producer, John Roca, he wasn't is here. there. He wasn't here. I, that's what I'm saying, is that I probably wouldn't have done it if Roca was. I'll get yelled at for it, but here. hey, I wanted to take a shot. I thought Coy would. I thought Coy was gonna. But be, did you make it into no, the street? No, he looked at me like he was mad. He was gonna punch me. I thought this Coy. was. Uh, I'm doing a show. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> Come in. Sit down. Sit down. Oh. Sit down. Both <laughs> you guys. Here, here, here. Wait, 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 wait. Have, 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 have Amy. Uh, is it wrap? Is the show wrap now? Go wait. Let, no, give Amy the mic. Give Amy the mic. What's up? All right. All right. I know you were. Sit. I know. Well, this is here. Here was. This is what I thought was gonna happen with that bit. We were going to, so Brett goes around the stage and he interviews everybody, right? So what we thought was going to happen, we were going to, I had six questions that we were going to ask. One of them was about bagels and asking if Amy knew who Brett was. I thought Amy was going to be like, I don't know what's happening right now. I thought you'd be I've like, never seen Amy so angry and confused in my life. She well, goes, but who are she, you? I, I heard them. I heard them. And then, so, so then, so then, Coy. Did you guys think he was like a homeless person? Or yeah. what, what did you but think I, was Wait, wait, let, 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 let but I'm going to ask them. So, so Coy, I thought was going to be like, oh, I know these guys from Collider Live and I'm going to go like, you know what? I'll tell you what, Brett. And I just hear Brett like, get the fuck out of here! What are you doing over here? And I hear Amy like, we're doing a show right now! I'm like, what, Amy, what the hell was going on in your mind when that happened at that moment? Uh, we... We were like well into the episode. <laughs> I'm like trying to pay attention to the time counts. I'm trying to think about like which stories we have left. And it was just like, is is there an emergency? <laughs> like, is the building on fire? Like, what is happening? Do either one of y'all know who Brett is? I've never seen the <laughs> That's the issue I have I with the bit. That's why I did it. Is it you wow, can't Brett. do that bit unless Roka's here because Roka's But I told the Adam. Conduit. But I told Adam the engineer because I I actually that was the thing. I'm happy with the result, and, it, and I'm happy with the result because of the way they came in, too, because I'm glad they did it, on, did it on the air, because the fact is, once they knew it was a bit, now they're laughing about it. They, oh, because when they, nice to meet you. I'm Amy. <laughs> I, the fire in his eyes was frightening. And we're gonna, I'm like, and the, I, other, I, the other point was the cross-promotion of it, because when that when that airs today, because I'll tell you right now, I'm tuning in immediately when it goes on. I got up on it. Yeah. Well, and then I looked at Wendy. I'm like, Wendy knows me. Okay. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but... Uh, Heroes wrapped 20 minutes ago. Wait, what? What? <laughs> we were trying to figure out what was being like, we missed. We were knee deep in all the notes and trying to figure everything out and watching the time. And then the interruption came. We were trying Wait, to make sure we covered it. So the show wasn't even on the air? No. I mean, not. technically. Oh, oh man. <laughs> well, got you guys. <laughs> Oh, you, so you got, uh, wait, so you wait, knew he was coming that, in? That is, what's the truth? <laughs> you, 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 knew, you knew he was coming in? Well, they rapped right when we were about to do it, and so I figured, ah, let's fuck with him a little bit. Oh, All right. man. Nice little prank. Well, I felt I fucked wait, with Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> they got us. They got us. So this whole thing, <laughs> I've never wait, wait, seen wait, wait. Christian I? get pranked before. <laughs> Amy. I was, I was giving I was the right. narrative. Wait, Go on. I was right. See? I was right. I knew. I knew that. Son of a bitch. You know what? This is why. No, I'll tell you why I'm mad. I'm mad because I did a nice fucking guy thing this morning. And I went in and I said, I said, you know what? I'm going to tell Adam and I'm going to tell the guys that I'm going to do it because everyone bitches and moans all the time. Like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You got to get upset. You got to get in trouble. So, you know what? I'm going to let the production guys know. I'm going to let Adam know. And then they turned on me. I'm not telling you motherfuckers anything. Wait, wait, wait. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, I just, wait, hold on a second. Right. I, I look over to. I, so, like, you are in knows on it. me. I look over to her for, like, help me. And she screams at me and shoves me to be the did, we, did we record? Did we record this though? Yeah, yeah, we got it on video. All right. Yeah, okay. But no, yeah, here's the thing. All right. I, I, we saw <laughs> the opportunity. Curious, what exactly? We, that well, was so wait, wait, important Brett, that you were going to come cop, in. Cops, cops are it was more so for Brett because the fear in his eyes was amazing. Okay. But also, we didn't want everyone to be disappointed because we set it up already. That's so I fair. figured 
the, we saw the that, opportunity and we landed on oh, it. Oh, by, by, by absolutely no means should you be apologizing for doing it. Oh, it no, was, no, no, no. It was, it was great that you did it. Um, but I'm not ever telling you yeah. guys ever again <laughs> yeah. when I'm planning on I'm just telling you right now. I'm going to just send Brett to do stuff, and you're like, oh, no. We're gonna get do trouble. you feel like the people at home are understanding at all what just happened? At this because, point, yeah. Oh, you know when you watch a movie, and it's like, and, and then it flips, and then it flips again, it, and then it flips a third, and you're like, wait, John what's John happening was, was Makuga, <laughs> was Makuga in on it? Are we right now? Was Makuga yeah. in on it? He wasn't really? there. No, he no. wasn't, so, uh. he, so he yelled at me again. <laughs> nice try, I'll let the way you want it. It was shaking. Yeah. <laughs> like no, it was done very real. It was done, it was done great. Yeah, he, he it felt very yeah, authentic. Acting. Yeah, really. It was good. All three. See, now, well, now I really want to look forward. You guys should actually air that on Heroes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we can cut it in right It's a post credit scene. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, say, let's, yeah, we let's air there. that. Let's air that on Heroes. 100%. Uh, and, and, we'll, and we'll also put it on the podcast <laughs> channel, too. Because that, look, well done. <laughs> I feel well like we started a rivalry. It's on now, bitch. It's on. live versus Heroes. Well, yeah. Cops are trying to into. cops trying to backstab. He's like, we were actually pranking Brett. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, this whole time, yeah. you know, feel good about it. No, well, <laughs> yeah. here's the real problem. Here's the real fallout of Damn this: it. is that is that it does count as a prank against Christian, which I've never seen before. Yeah, it does. But the fire that that you just created a super villain. <laughs> this, this is the origin story of the fucking Riddler right yeah. here. Is I that Edward Nigma got got? No, and so I, now, I, I I'll tell you right now because when I heard them, because you guys did a very I good see job. See the wheels no, I, turning. No, already. They, but they did a very good job because when I because I went in my head when he walked in there and they said, "What the fuck are you doing?" I was like. Well, they turned on him quick. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and in my head, I'm going, oh, shit. But it no. felt like, like it all fe- we could do is hear it. It felt awkward. It was like yeah. a Cloverfield situation where we're like, I can't see what's it going was, on. Was, no. was, was well I, for a second, thought, well, they know I'm coming in. This is going to be fun. You set it yeah, all up. Yeah. But then it was that, oh, shit moment of like, no, they didn't. He didn't tell them. This is, I he really wanted me to I get I should have known with him, though, because he doesn't act like that. No, but I mean, <laughs> he would have he been, and I don't know you well enough I'm to. I'm wildly hostile, so you can never But no, not hostile, but I wouldn't. I mean, I could see you getting upset, like, why are you messing with my show? I could see that, but, but with, have a seat. But, join us. Yeah, but so believable. But even though, I mean, I'm like, telling you, best like, actor, actress. It was good. They, they got I mean, they got you, huh? But then I yeah. assume Christian knew, so that he was like asking for the narrative. I was giving the narrative, so I was like, "What's the truth? <laughs> right. What lies I, am I yeah. telling?" No, I didn't know. No, no. Cops, that was that was cops are well done. You're you're you're, you're definitely you're you're gonna be. Uh, you know, you're, you're nobody done. should be clapping anything because the future of this building is in flames. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. This only goes yeah. one direction. Brett, and it's we, down. Brett, uh, we will have our revenge. <laughs> Cut yeah. to like Amy waking no. up in the night and Brett standing over her. Yeah, yeah. Who I yeah. something's gonna happen. There's yeah. a horse head under my pillow tonight. Uh, it was it was well it was well done. It was well, I can't I can't. I mean you got to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, it do not get in a bar coming. fight with Coy, Amy, or no, Wendy because it was done. Well they done. Turn it on. High five on that one. High five on that one. Right. That was good. Nice uh, to I look you. forward to you. seeing you guys nice scare the hell out of them. Yeah. Um, you guys wouldn't even ha- answer any of the questions. So it was a, it was really good. Can we? Is there a way to play back the audio yet? Or not yet? Uh, no, probably not yet. I mean, uh, we're giving Dorian the video right now, so okay. we can probably post it on social. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you can post it on, if you can post it on, uh, if, you know, if you post it on show, social, and then we could actually watch it. Yeah, we. Can, I think what I'll, we'll try to do, we'll sync it up with the actual show itself good. and Alex's oh, video, and we can post that somewhere. That was good. No, no, wow. yeah. no, no. What? What is you it? guys have fucked with the wrong person. Yeah, I know. I am the best at the prank wars. All right, and calm down. No. Yeah, but you, you, didn't, you didn't even get mixed. So what are you talking about? I feel as if I did. All right, fine. You can help because us. they tried to pull the wool over my eyes. To be fair, yeah. it, it was and I will so, not have hold it. Hold on, cops are good. It was more so just for Brett. I, I wanted to see Brett kind of get. It doesn't feel that way. All right. No, I'll I mean, tell you, there was they were good. I mean, I I knew. You know, no, I, was, I, was, I, I was. want to hear your point of view. So yeah, all right. So you so you get you so you go in there. I walk in there. And I just like busted, best, like you said. I yeah. just busted right through the cameras. Yeah. Got it right, in, and I just get. I'm sorry to interrupt. You know, no offense, but who am I? You know, like this. Were they I, sitting around the and table? They just look at me like. Just what are Fire. you doing? And in your head, what are you doing? We're in the middle of a show. Where what are you, I'm like, what this are you th- isn't a bit uh, shit. Okay, I got it. And, am I, and then Wendy starts almost throwing I a asked shoe you, at asked me. About the, I think I asked you to ask about the bagels. Yeah. And you asked. And then I said, get out of there. Get yeah, out of yeah, there. Yeah. And I, <laughs> See, I, the I, fear I, in your eyes was fun, too. Because I was like, I was like, oh, man. I was like, this whole thing is just going to come crazy. I was like, that was supposed to be fun. Because in my head, I'll be honest with you, I was going to say, stay there. And go through it, but then I didn't want to. You have were gonna people, have him stay for the whole show. I was gonna have people st- have him stay. And I said, "What?" Because I like when it sits in there and get into it. But then it's like more people going, "Why did you stay there? Why did you do that? Yeah. They obviously didn't want you to be there." And I'm like, "I don't want to go through this right now." But I gotta stick to my guns. I that's that's this was that's supposed this, to be an that, exhibition. No, this taught me that I have to stick with my guns all the way through to the very end because I should have kept you in there. Christian, that doesn't even make any sense. If he had stayed in there, the joke on you would
you know, uh, Brett, put the, put. I would ask them why they're so offended. Yeah. I'd have questions you about it. You would not have gotten mm. to the bottom of I it. Uh, no, I, 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 I think you're what? working with somebody who is, is great at pranking, but also is a very genuine reader of yeah. human emotion. Not ready to say month yet. <clears throat> oh. Of the month? Because he's got something else. But now Roxy's coming in saying that she oh. might we'll be the queen well, of the pranks. I'm, I'm kind of bitter. Are you? Yeah. I Why? thought it was. A, I, I am. I am applauding the bit. I thought it was a great bit. Um, but I. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not done yet. Oh, we're not a, done yet because there's a pirate in the building that we haven't talked to. <laughs> oh my gosh. So oh. Are we able to? Do we have enough time to talk to Actually, the pirate? Oh, okay. Yeah. We have seven minutes. Seven minutes. Let's let's talk to the pirate. <laughs> Beardo said seven minutes. Like, don't talk to the. Pirate. Are we going to? Or should we bring him in so we can be seen? No, go and talk to. What's him the, the deal office. with the pirate? So Frank dressed up like a pirate. I know, because Mark told we us. We don't know. I know, he ruined it. I, I know. reported the news. Yeah. Ask he, him about Loki he's... and uh, Scarlet Witch. What was your goal there oh, is, with, the, why, with is, he mad, is he mad about that? No, I'm just because we haven't talked about it yet. Oh, my God. We, <laughs> totally never talk, we didn't even talk <laughs> we didn't about it. We didn't even talk about it. It's cool. It's totally cool, though. Oh, my oh God. no. We didn't even How's the it? world going to survive? It was our main, <laughs> was our main topic. Over here. I'm so confused, though. What did you want to happen with the pirate that you didn't want Mark to spoil that? Well, and here, here's my question. What did you want to happen with the guy dressed as a pirate when we're not not filming it. What is the what's the bit here? <laughs> We're not <laughs> filming it either, are we? No, I'm we'll rattled. Take I'm all rattled. <laughs> a bit rattled. I mean, he looks great. He looks like a pirate. I had, I had, a, I had a two second bit of him. <laughs> all right, so is it you in there with him right now? Yeah, yeah. This is a all great right. radio. Are we bit. gonna take it? <laughs> Frank, you're, you're dressed up as a pirate. Why? <laughs> Yeah, or do you want me to describe his outfit? Yeah, well, no, ask him, say, High so, patch, say, right? Say, say why, yeah, say, why are you dressed as a pirate, Why are you, you silly dressed son of like a bitch? as a pirate, you silly son of a bitch? Oi, it's uh, International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Say, say, is, ah, this, say yeah. is this true or is this some problems that you have in your life? Is this, is this true or is this some problems you're having in your life? I, it's uh, International Dress Like a Pirate Day. Say your voice He's is, sticking to his guts. Say your voice is making me sick. Your voice is making me sick. What's the question? I practiced on the way here this morning, and now my throat hurts. So how long do you think you can keep this up before you, you pass yourself out? How long do you think you can keep this up before you pass out? Probably seven more minutes when the show's over. Hey, Brett, can you ask him who would win in a fight between Captain Hook and Captain Crunch? Who would win in a fight between Captain Hook and Captain Crunch? Mm. Stumper. That's going to be Captain Jack Sparrow. All right, all right. Now go, go walk over to... Hey, s- can, walk- I, can I bring him in? I no, yeah, no, 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 no. In a second. But go over to Snyder right. and walk over to Snyder and say, say, hey, asshole, what are you working on? Oh, now? you're, di- you're sh- <laughs> grasping his throat. No, 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 no. We've been doing... This, this happened last week. Snyder, I've had enough of your shit. <laughs> hey, asshole, what are you working on? <laughs> a hot scoop. Say, what's your scoop? A hot scoop. Is it the thing about uh, Kylie Jenner eating cereal with milk for the first time? I saw that one drop. <laughs> that That is what we call a cold scoop, actually. <laughs> say, it's not, say, that's hot. Snyder, don't lie to me. What are you really looking at? What are you, what are you really – well, I can see what he's looking at. He's looking at a uh, filmography. Yeah. Uh, I'm not allowed to say until later this afternoon, but uh, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a, a, a scoop for horror fans. Oh, scoop for horror fans. All right, go bring fucking p- the pirate in here. Let's I like talk to him. purple shirt. Oh, thank you. He likes my purple shirt. Say, I won. Say, I'm getting the pirate. Say, Snyder, how about I choke you out with this shirt? <laughs> I already left him. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, come with me. All right, let's talk about Scarlet Witch. Nobody hides Frank in his costume. Yeah, let's get, we'll get him in here. We'll talk about <laughs> no, Scarlet Witch. we did Witch talk about it a little bit. Not really. No. For two seconds. Here, it come on happen. in. What? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's have, let's have you sit down over there. Hello, sir. All right, does he have a mic? He doesn't right. have a mic. Why'd you have that mic? I don't know. Uh, Corey brought it in. All right. He one. All right, but so then he used Frank, yours anyway? so real, r- real, uh, real question here is what, um, so you just want, is it really a National Pirate Day? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking like that. Yeah, it's fine. But what, but it is it? international talk like a pirate. Day. And you're like, you are like a legit big pirate guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, what does that Studio mean? City Tattoo no, to anybody in the Los Angeles area is doing cheap pirate tattoos today. Oh. And I'll be going there after work mm-hmm. to get a pirate. Where did, like a real tattoo? Yeah. Where did that Where did that come from? Like the 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 love for pirates. Uh, my love for Johnny Depp, ah. which led me to the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which inspired everything in my life since. Wow. Then. How many Look tattoos do you have? Uh, I got a bunch. This yeah. is this this one I got on the last Talk Like a Pirate Day for ah. fifty dollars. Oh, look wow. at that! So you're just gonna get a, a random tattoo because it's cheap, uh, and because it's Pirate Day. <laughs> yeah. Um, Frank. All right. So I, I do I, want. I, 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 I am gonna have... like berate everybody. <laughs> don't turn this on me now. I know she's in know? a mood today, Frank. I don't know what it is. I apologize. I, you know who I haven't turned on yet today? Oh. You. you so want you to? want to talk about me being in a mood? Well, you're in a mood. Uh, yeah. Sounds like <laughs> yeah. Salty. I haven't turned on Alice either. Uh, I, Mr. M- Mr. Makuga, Roxy's in a terrible mood today. What should she do? 
Jesus, Peter. Now ready Sleep in the hallway. Anyway. I, feel, I, I feel like I ruined this whole show. Yeah, I, I feel. I feel like I, feel I, like I just came it. in. The show was chaos. I wasn't. I wasn't prepared. I gave away the Frank reveal. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand what this show has become. I, well, I didn't do my research. Well, the only thing I want to. We should talk about this though because people that click on for this, we should talk about it quick and then we'll get out of here. Let's get Frank's thoughts first. All right, fine. Um, I don't care about the uh, Marvel TV show. All right, show. it was great seeing you, Frank. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Um, I actually Frank. really like Frank, too. <laughs> yeah. Just so everybody knows. Let's talk, let's talk Here's about, your let's, backup mic. Let's end the, let's oh, end the show. You. Let's end the show with this here. I'd um, love some guy liner, too. Several. It's kind of sexy. The Disney streaming service is going to have Scarlet Witch and Loki in mini series. It's going to be a limited series that they're going to have, and they're going to have it on their streaming service. Couple this with some of the original movies they're going to do, the Lady and Tramp live action. Um, Exclusive... Yeah, to the service. Yep, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, to do an exclusive to that service. I think it's a brilliant idea. Mm-hmm. Sells a lot of tickets. I think you put more money inside of it. I think you're going to get. Uh, I think it is a much better idea than to do a standalone movie of Loki or a standalone movie of Scarlet Witch because you can do. You, you would assume it's going to be in the pre era or like, like a prequel. Considering, uh, because if they're not, then they're tipping their hat that these characters survive. Down yeah, the but well, the, do we know they're... when they're coming out? It, 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 the streaming, yeah, yeah, the shows aren't going to come out until the until Infinity War four. So whatever happened, I mean, Loki seemed pretty much like toast at at, at the uh, beginning of of Infinity War. So whatever happens with them, we're already going to know how their storylines resolve themselves, and we're going to know that before they announce any details. I'm certain of with the shows themselves. Absolutely. So obviously, Scarlet Witch and Loki have a huge background that you could call from as a prequel. I'd be interested to see it, and I do think it's a very smart marketing play by Disney to make it exclusive to that because they see what blows up on Netflix, and it's Marvel shows. Yeah, and I think, and well, when you look at it too, these are but these are also two characters, not only the Marvel shows, which you're right about, but these are two very popular characters that the the, the actors are going to actually play them. Tom Hiddleston has done television, streaming television before, um, and I think that Elizabeth Olsen has become better and better as Scarlet Witch. The first. Before, she got rid of that accent, which is good. Yeah. Um, and I think that they're going to really go all in with this. I, I love the idea. I'm so much more interested in Scarlet Witch than Black Widow. It's insane. Yeah. Like, I, I've, I've been rooting for her own standalone something, and I think that this is perfect. I think that she has improved the most of anybody, and I love Elizabeth Olsen now. You could also bring back uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson as uh, Quicksilver, too. That's true. If they do a prequel. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's... and what is So here we go. It says that there's an important distinction from other Marvel small screen efforts. The actors who portray these heroes and villains in the Avengers film and their spinoffs, such as Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen, are expected to play them in the streaming shows. Moreover... Those sources close to the production are staying mum on the cost of the programming. The budgets are expected to be rivaling those of a major studio production. That makes complete sense. Each series is expected to include six to eight episodes, and that's what you. That, so you're basically getting an eight-hour movie. And six, Kevin six Feige is going to have a hands-on yeah. role, I yeah. think. So that's what it says he's going he's to produce it. Yeah. If you have, do you think that because it was the next line in the article? This or just com- I, my, you cannot say. Wisdom comes from many different sources here. That's the distinction between that and the Netflix shows because the Netflix shows like the MCU and Kevin Feige himself were pretty much like, hey, we don't want to worry about continuity in our movies by having Daredevil make a cameo in here. We, right. we don't we don't necessarily want to bring in Luke Cage or Iron Fist or or, or uh, you know Jessica Jones just for the sake of having them show up in our movies. We want a clear distinction. That's very different than what they're doing with the Disney streaming service. They right. see what a juggernaut these things are at the box office. Why not reap some of that benefit and make it exclusive? From a business standpoint, this makes all the sense in the world. I agree. I, agree. I mean, it's, take your property. Because the, the Marvel property is so big now that they can take a lot of these characters. They can spin off different things. And if this is successful, they'll do more and more one of, of the most beloved characters, Loki, yes. and one of the most powerful characters, Scarlet Witch. Yeah. That's a two home runs. It's a good way I to agree. do it. And I think that, you know, what's funny is I bet you that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would have had a very different life had this streaming service been around. I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would have been a different type of show that they could have done in the series that wouldn't have been because net, these shows don't belong on network TV. I think it's proven to what you can what you can do on Marvel, what they've done with The Punisher, what they've done with Daredevil, and what they can with a big budget. They're going to carry it over where it's going to look like these mini movies and fans are going to, they're going after Marvel fans, they're going after Star Wars fans. I mean, they're going after The classic everybody. Disney library this is fans? A, this, this, this streaming service is really Really starting to shape up. How much would love. you pay for it? How much would I? How much might pay for it? Or how much do I think they're going to charge? How, how, much, how much would, would you, you pay, pay for it? it? Because you're getting your Star Wars show. Twenty bucks a month. 
Holy fuck. Suck my dick on that one, too. I think, it's, too. I think, it's, I think it's worth it. I don't think they're going to charge that much. I think they're going to charge about fifteen. That would be insane, Christian. You're, getting, You're going to pay more for that than a Netflix. I think these. I think these shows are going to give me more than, than Netflix. Think about what, all the original series me, that there are. For me, what I'm as far as what, what I. What would you pay for Netflix? Ten to twelve bucks. Wow. I like Ozark. Yeah. That's it. And Stranger of Things. All their shows. And Stranger Things. You don't like any of the other Marvel me, series that are on uh, there? Uh, yeah, it's like maybe like five or six shows that well, are on there. Well, it's not even the original the content black. on Netflix. I, I can do like a lot. I bailed on that. Don't know what that Frankie it's the shows. Ag- it's the aggregation of all the other just movies yeah. and documentaries. I love the documentaries. Same thing with I would the get rid of Netflix, Netflix and get this. What? Is the wow. What? If I had to, I'll get both. Because I, I, really, I, I really care about. That Favreau series, I think it's going to save Star Wars, and I think that this, I think that these, um, this can be a really great way to expand the MCU the way that they thought they were gonna do on television. With because here's two the two things though, Daredevil, Punisher, and Defenders, Jessica Jones, they don't need to further the MCU. It's it, it they should be separate. They shouldn't really. These will further the MCU in some way, even if it's to add a little more backstory to the characters. They will further the MCU, and I think that's a nice tool to have inside. I think it's a nice service. family investment uh, yeah. with, with Disney over Netflix, simply Netflix because has tons of series for kids. Yeah, but you get the beloved Disney library yeah. Yeah. With, uh, with, with with Disney as uh, as me myself. I would probably rely on my dear friend Christian Harlow uh, and go over and watch the first episode of the Favreau Star Wars thing. Yeah. See it's got it it's got to really get its claws yeah. into me uh, because I would as of right now just looking at it on paper I'm gonna miss not having the MCU uh, series and the Star Wars series I'm taking Netflix Netflix yeah. if ESPN comes Same. into there yeah. then it's a different ballgame I understand that most people most, if you put a poll out right oh, no. now and fifty thousand people voted on Netflix or the Disney service. Forty nine thousand are going to choose the oh, Netflix. I, I disagree you with that. So? I think there's people? a lot of people who want to see these series. As All right, now. maybe so, but I, I, I just, uh, I'm curious what the, what the. Where do you go, Brett? Think. I just, I mean, twenty bucks to a guy gets paid by Marvel every time he mentions it. <laughs> you know, just Disney. Yeah, yeah, just it just Disney goes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, No, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I, Hashtag of course, Disney I would. Shield. Use his login for that for twenty bucks a yeah. month. You That's know? The other thing is, we're all friends. Yeah, we all can, we can share. Can we split? I mean, between this one, the DC one, the Nickelodeon one that I wanted, the Netflix, the Hulu, the Amazon. I, yeah, I, like I'm gonna need to figure out a. It's um, a lot of stuff. A waitressing gig. Yeah. We're all gonna be friends. You get Nickelodeon. I'll keep Netflix. You get Disney. You get, and then we all but share then passwords. Then you can't have more than two people on at once, and that's what I do yeah. with my brother, and he screws me. Yeah. Every time I turn on Netflix, it asks me if I'm one of three people. Yeah. So that's fine. That's and, and and my mom never watches Netflix, so I can kind of take her off right. that without telling her. Mm. All right. Listen, this is a great show. It was a lot of fun. I, uh, you don't think I ruined it? No, I actually like it. It was chaotic. It was, chaotic. It was crazy. It? You were in a mood. Happy, I don't think you ruined it. Yeah. Yeah. Moods are okay though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Am I allowed to be go, in a mood on the show? You, you were in a mood, and but I was worse because I, <laughs> I was uneducated and unprepared. I had good reason. I'm, I'm pretty. Listen, it's fine. Jet lag, but I will listen to Afterthoughts this week. Yeah. Because I need to hear the criticisms of what you did. Of yeah. what I did. Uh, they're not on this week. They're coming back next week. Where do I suck from? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the top. <laughs> where the fuck is that from? <laughs> so we have. We Afterthoughts will be back. Um, not this week, but the following week. Yeah. Okay. What's Oh, are you, is that a hush no. hush thing? Because my mom was very concerned she couldn't find it this week. No, they and were, I had to DM Snelling about it. Snelling's going to the I don't know if I'm supposed to say he's going to the doctor or something. So like a dentist or something. I don't. I was supposed so to say I that. I stop being a dick about him. Like is something wrong? Well, no, he's got. To, I think he, he tweeted out he's got a root canal or something. So oh, he's going to recover. That's so what happens. You eat all week. that taffy in the Gulf of yeah. Mexico. Mm. But I'd like to thank Steve Byrne for coming in. I'd like to he's thank great. you for having a big old poop in your pants for oh, the Heroes episode. Welcome. I can't wait to watch that. That was rough. We'll put it in Heroes. We'll, we'll tweet. We'll tweet it out. Make sure you you look out for that. And um, we'll see you guys on Monday for Mark Ellis, Roxy Stryer, the whole crew, Brett Sheridan, Collider Live. See you on Monday.